Welcome to the EST Hangout. This is the EST Hangout, and today's guests are... A happy Thursday morning to you. This is the EST Hangout, presented by White Claw Heart Seltzer. The difference is clear. Matawanek. Walking Gage with us and Coach Pete. I'm calling you Coach Pete if that's okay. If <laughs> that that's works. what we'll go with. Coach that Pete. Works. Yes. Uh, he was uh, the gentleman that coached Team EST at the Heavy Hockey Showdown back in February uh, and did a mighty fine job. Uh, we will get into that in a little bit. You were an excellent coach. I was glad to serve alongside you as your assistant, and the team failed us mightily. Yes, miserable failure. Miserable. It wasn't on us. We had them prepared. <laughs> We were hired to be fired. That's yeah. It, it was. It's a shame of how miserable that they were just on the ice. I'll just say that. We'll get into that. Though. We're live on iHeartRadio. Tune in EdmontonSportsTalk.com as well as those watching us on YouTube. The morning show getting 600 likes uh, this morning. Uh, I think their whole goal was just getting 400 likes all week. And yesterday hit the five. Today hitting the six. Uh, so naturally tomorrow. Got to get a thousand. I'm just gonna. It's the end of the week. Let's just really bump it up. Everyone just uh, open up a few extra accounts. <laughs> yeah, everyone's got some sort of burners. Mm-hmm. How many? Like I have like five different Gmail accounts. Do you? I have a personal. I have fantasy football. Oh jeez. I have one for this place. What else do I have? I had one for a soccer podcast I used to do. Uh, actually, I have two for this place because I didn't know which way we wanted to go with it. <laughs> so yeah, I've got five different Gmail accounts. That's I could good. go on, and there's five likes right there. Well, I gotta give my resume to Pete for next year, so uh, it's good. Like, he had a little struggles, and then I can come in and hopefully save the day next year. <laughs> that would work. I think we're gonna need to recruit a few people, Pete. Yes, definitely. We need a whole new team. <laughs> <laughs> no one's back. It's all a brand new team. Coaching staff remains. So I, I, I want to bring Gager in. Okay. I say Sean Bell is a big one for me because a defender. Yes. But this guy thinks I'm wrong with that. You think I need to go Cass first. Oh, yeah. You need Cass. It's Bell's Why not eight. both? Well, that's... The, yeah, I it's going to be full court press. Yeah, it's, it's the Monstars, <laughs> essentially, when, next year. But if you had to pick, um, you don't realize... When you see Cass on skates and gets out there, it's very intimidating. And I know Belzy's intimidating too, but not like Cass because you know the the past history. If you watch the the uh, the opening to Two Guys, seeing him kind of feeding people, uh, he, the, his fist keeps hitting someone in the face. So um, I think there's a there's the uh, the toughness aspect we can go after. Just a little intimidation is always nice. That's the start of the team toughness. <laughs> right off the draw, first one, just punches a guy right in the face. Goes in the box for five. It took him five minutes. We had a couple of fake well, fights. Oh, yeah. And it was only like two minutes. Oh, there we I'll go. I'll lose cast for two minutes. Yeah, we can do that. That's fine. And yeah, that would work. I think so. Yes. Send the message early. Yeah, set the tone. Absolutely. And then I, I just, I, I don't know, Bell being a defenseman. We need, we <laughs> Bell's need... he, we won't, he'll come up to me before the game and say, see you after. Like and he's playing defense, so he's not going to be back but, in his so own zone. You're Kate, okay, right? But I, he could come back. <laughs> he won't. <laughs> Gage, why didn't you play that? It's, it's a three on zero. <laughs> so, no, it's. Uh, so you're saying I need to go? For, we need to go for Struddy. Uh, Would no. he focus on the defensive Ooh, game? Struddy's. Yeah, Struddy, uh, his his intensity level in in men's league is quite low. Like there's not a with Cass and Belzy you'll get a push here and there. Struddy is you know he's he's a, he's a cool breeze on the ice these days. Too much too much stars on ice. You know he's a, he's looking for a, the place to throw down a double axle or a triple sow cow at this point. <laughs> but we need defense, don't we? Definitely. Like we were forced to put Dusty and Tommy on defense, and they were out of position. I'll tell you that right now. And they they were too scared to skate up the ice. I was like, but one of you guys, start just play forward, basically. We only need one of you back, really. I, we I've, need goals. I've got a guy. I've got a <laughs> guy that? for us. Mike Biche. Okay. We can get, if we get Biche, um, he plays D, and he's a forward, but he's responsible. And he's dynamite. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get in touch with Biche and see if he'll. Because uh... if we get Gager, we get Biche, we get Cass, yep. we get Bell. 
I'll still take Strutty because you know what? Here's the thing about Strutty. He'll just throw out jokes and make the other team laugh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like he'll Psychological just, warfare. He'll just be like, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's just going to start yeah. laughing, and everyone's gonna be like, so, so you, you have Strutty there. Um, do you know any good goalies? Because you don't play goal. I, I'll play, not, not like a straight up like. <laughs> I'll, I'll play goal. goal. I'll play goal if you want. Um, I don't need you getting hurt. I won't get hurt. Not in that. Um, Does Ben Scriven still play goal though? Yeah, but he, he would be on? better forward. He is great. Okay. Yeah, he's got sweet, actually really sweet hands. Actually, for he dangles guys in uh, in in some of the tournaments here. Like, it's, could we convince Curtis Mooka to play goal for us? Oh, Mooch. I don't know. I don't, do you know him at all? Yeah, yeah. So we get him in that. I'd like to get Ian Herbers out too, if we can. Herbie's a menacing on the back end. That's our that's our big D. Mac T. Mac T. Come out. We're really building a strong team here, I think, for next year. We just go, we got to look at our list and see who we're crossing out. Who are our early cuts? Oh, God. Training camp's going to be actually difficult. Well, it, it, I actually know what this is reminding me. It's the Simpsons episode of the um, oh, uh, a Homer yeah, at Bat with yeah. the, the baseball team, how it's yeah. like all the. the the power yeah, plant workers, <laughs> but then you, but then they bring in all the pros, yeah. and here we're gonna just bring in all the pros. And do I have a spot? Now oh, you're on the bench. It's Don't be, worry. It's gonna be tough to convince Cass to shave his beard, though. <laughs> no sideburns. No sideburns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's uh, extra too. We had a good Simpsons reference. Oh, what a great thing. Uh, we've got the Masters on my computer, so if you see uh, Gage and I, at the very least, just <laughs> zoning out, it's going to be because we're going to watch the Masters. Um, if they get going, I don't know if anyone's actually teed off yet at Augusta. Not yet. Because uh, there's been a bit of a delay. Um, if we need to, I do have Dune 2 on file that I can throw up there. <laughs> Perfect. Um, what a so movie. So we can watch that movie. Have you ever? Have you seen Dune? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Have you seen both? Yes. What would you think? I thought very good. I was actually, uh, yeah, I was very happy. that It moved away from the book in a couple of small places, but there were just, you know, small uh, small details that they took a bit of a different path. But no, very, uh, th that has to be broken up into a whole bunch of movies because yeah. those books are just so huge and there's so <laughs> much detail in them. Uh, the uh, director, Dennis... Villeneuve. Villeneuve. Um, I guess it's been greenlit for yeah. Dune Messiah. Dune Messiah. To do the next yeah. part and kind of end the Paul Atreides. I haven't read the books. I'm just starting to read actually Dune. I'm about a third of the way through. So it's yeah. really interesting reading it and comparing it now to the movie, having seen the movies first and then go to. I like, I'm about 300 pages in rereading the, the first book. And uh, it's funny how, and well, it's not really a spoiler alert. I guess it's from the book. But um, Leto Atreides <laughs> knew that the Harkonnens were, were going to invade at yeah. some point. And he was really trying to recruit a Fremen and mercenaries to, to protect him. And so he knew all this was happening. So it was a... It's neat to reread the book and and see the all the backstory and stuff. But I mean, I was a fan of the first movie for years, so I didn't really even know any different. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the 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 movies were great. But it's uh, it's nice to kind of see what uh, what happened in the books and how how close it is. Um, yeah, the arc of Paul Atreides is going to be awesome. This is going to be really cool. Uh, Gus in the nasty chat asking about Mike Bisha. Is that the guy who fought the Thrashers? Are, is it, are we talking about that same guy? Well, we're still going toughness. Yeah, yeah okay. same guy. Yeah. So the guy that went to the bench and was beating yeah. on the Thrashers. Yeah. That was a great game. It was an awesome game. Where the Thrashers had to play the last like six minutes or whatever without a goalie. Because their first goalie got hurt. And then there was the goalie fight. Who were the, who was, do you remember the goalie fight? Oh, uh, so it wasn't it a Finnish guy? I can't remember. Was that Conklin at the time? Might have been, yeah. Pretty sure it was. Yeah. And then, yeah, the, the Thrashers had an empty net for the rest of the game. Yeah. <laughs> I remember rushing home from school the next day because at that time, Sportsnet would replay the game yeah. the next afternoon. And I wanted to watch that final <laughs> stretch of the entire fight. Be yeah. shy on the bench, just giving it to the Thrashers himself. And then just watching at the end of the game where there was no goalie on the other side of the. Bish was uh, that's the thing like he was tough but he was a talented player too like really good god the it's amazing how you don't even uh, sometimes don't even realize how good some of these guys are like but he would uh, he would definitely help us that would I'm guessing about three or four goals from Bish that, that do you know what I'm liking he's already saying us 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> We've already convinced he's, him. He's hooked. He's, he's, hooked. In. he's in. I yeah. like it. He's, he's, this is his team. He's helping recruit. He's taking ownership. <laughs> well, I, I GM saw, player. That's what we've got over here. My, there uh, we go. Yes. My old men's league team, the the has, uh, Hazmat, Hasbeans, um, they've, uh, I won three, three championships of Division One Alberta men's. They, uh, they just finished. They've, uh, they've won five in a row. So I'm not even needed on that team anymore. So that maybe a maybe next year I'll go. I'll I'll make a comeback. Who knows? It'll be fun. Caster 1990 also in the nasty chat. I need to address this. Goes Matt. According to Dusty, I know you know way too much on how to properly bury a body of one where to commit murder. She would be calling you Dexter Wanick from now on. Okay, so this <laughs> came up yesterday. Um, I don't know how it fully came up, but I've recently like I love Reddit, and I can get into some weird threads. And into like, and people have a lot of fun with them. <laughs> I've learned some things on burying a body. You don't want to bury them lying down. You want to bury them as if they're standing up, mm. because usually when they're doing the search, they're looking for the the right. long one. And then you also bury like a dog on top of it. So when they dig, they catch the the dog. I'm like, oh, we found what we what was here. That's what I learned on the internet. That's uh well you're... I don't have any like reason for that. <laughs> I don't know why it fully came up yesterday. But yeah, I told Dusty that. <laughs> a, a lot of times those uh the grand penetrating radar, you get a whole lot of false positives. Oh and yeah. I remember working with some guys and they they dug up a whole lot of holes and found a whole lot of nothing. Really? Yes. So it's still, oh, okay. Then now, do they get to, because you're, you're from RCMP, or yes. still part-time. Yep. They they don't actually take shovels and dig. Uh, or is, do yeah. they? Oh, geez, that would suck. <laughs> if, uh, yeah, because you, you don't want to get any heavy equipment in there because you don't want to go and accidentally destroy what you're trying to dig for. Oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, so it's rather labor-intensive. This is probably the wrong person to tell my whole story. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I also, internet, I read too, Matt. You don't feel too bad. That um, they say don't bury the the body like downhill, like tre- go uphill because they won't look because most people will. They don't want it to be too hard. Like oh, they, they won't carry the they, body. Yeah, they up won't or carry something. the body up the hill. So I also learned from Casino. I think it is. Or is it Goodfellas? You always have the spot pre. Pre Doug. Oh, <laughs> casino the, the it was a field. casino? Yeah, yes. The that's that's yeah. Not where it was. That was a vicious scene. Oh like my that god. Oh. And that that might have made the movie, like in terms of just how great it was. I, I wait like, for that scene when I when I watch it. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I've got to see that scene because it's powerful. Oh my god. That's <laughs> and having to watch that as that's happening to your brother and you just get thrown in. Oh. For those that haven't seen Casino, like go watch it. It's just a brilliant movie. And so uh Man, now I just want to watch Casino again. <laughs> like, I want to watch Tune 2. I want to watch Casino. Uh, Casino or Goodfellas? Oh, that's tough. Because they're very similar. They are. They follow, like, a similar, like, plot line type thing. Many similar actors. If you got one, you can only watch one for the rest of your life. Casino, Goodfellas. I think I got to go Goodfellas because I love the Ray Liotta kind of narrative mm-hmm. of it all. Yes. And... Was it Elaine Bracco is the... Lorraine, she was in The Sopranos. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, she was. And, you know, the flushing of the blow always down the toilet. And, yeah, and Joe Pesci's just so evil in it, you know. And, yeah, I I, I, I go I go Goodfellas for sure. I, I have to agree. Like, Joe Pesci just over-the-top insane. And just the way everything flips on him at the end, you know, he thinks he's got it made. And all of a sudden, just the... You know, he just says one thing and that's it. He's he's done. The cooking scene in prison. Oh, especially when he's chopping the the garlic so thin. How many? I, uh, how I many, want that. Yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> you haven't done that. I've tried. I can't oh. get it that. Like I don't have anything that could just chop it that thin. Oh yeah. Just... I'm gonna I'm gonna slit a finger. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> have you got it? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. As soon as I saw that, I go. I gotta I gotta yeah. slice my garlic that thin and see if it melts into the sauce. Yeah, for sure. Then does it work like that? Well, ah, it's still kind of there, but yeah, you. It's tough to get it that thin. And I actually took a razor blade and tried to do it just because that scene, the cooking scene is fantastic. Yes. <laughs> I mean, the meal just looks so good. Ah, 
Yeah, prison looks great in that movie. That's, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. where you want to go. Exactly. I Hang out go, with your buddies. Go work out. <laughs> yeah. Get in shape. Jeez. Have a beautiful meal every night. Yeah. Great sausage. Like. I don't think it's like that though anymore. Is it? They got wine. <laughs> yeah, in the real toilet. wine. They got yeah. they got real yeah. wine. They didn't get the toilet wine. Oh, uh, God. Is that that is a real thing? It is. Yes. Have you ever tried it? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked places where uh, people would make homebrew, and sometimes they'd be drinking the homebrew before it was finished fermenting, Ooh. and the next morning when you're releasing people, they're you know they're burping and farting all night, and <laughs> the whole cell block just reeks of homebrew, and it's disgusting. Oh my gosh, that's uh that's really bad. Never thought about that. Bunch of guys drinking homebrew, and then. Farting like the, the, the after effects uh, of all of that. Dean Belanger in the nasty chair going on. He was at that game, the Atlanta Oilers game. Oh, yeah. Remember complaining to my wife before the game that he didn't really want to go because it was Atlanta and ended up being the best game of the year. Uh, and Nermanen fought Ty Conklin. Yeah. yeah Passy just, Nermanen. Yeah. That's who it was. So, yeah, I can't remember who their goalie would have been who got hurt. But, and then Fergie's prostate. A friend will help you move. A good friend will help you move a body. <laughs> I guess. I can see Fergie saying that. We've gone that far. <laughs> that's, that's. Uh, Oiler game last night. Uh, let's get to the Hangout headlines, which is brought to you by the Ranch Golf and Country Club. Premier conditions, top-notch service, unmatched value. They are the choice for your golf rounds this season. Opened this week based on the pictures. Looks absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, book your tea time by visiting the ranchgolf.com. Murray was on the morning show earlier today previewing the Masters uh, before he's off to work and now in his busy season uh, when it comes to the ranch. But that is the place you're going to want to golf. It is always excellent conditions. But the Oilers, they go knock off those Golden Knights. <laughs> um, what do you take away from those games? Or from that game, I should say. I want to hear the coach. What do you think so far? That's what... Uh... Everyone listens to my takes. <laughs> well, both teams were missing lots of players. Obviously, we're missing Connor, but I love the fact that, like, uh, you know, someone described it as low event hockey, and it was, I think, six shots against after at the end of the first period. You know, they just it's it's like they were, they just smothered the the Knights. You know, they super responsible. It was yeah, I was loving that game. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't take too much away from that game i i've it really felt like um the knights had an off night mm -hmm. um they that wasn't the the nights that i've seen in certain parts of the year uh, i think luke gazdek echoed my sentiment perfectly this morning when he was speaking how if you look at the players that are out of the knights lineup and you take the players that kind of match on the on the edmonton side it's a completely different team, and you really see the uh, the effect of not having your number one defenseman in the lineup. And Petrangelo is a is a beast of a hockey player. Uh, he makes it so much more difficult all over the ice, and he he uh, he develops offense from the back end, which I talk about at length. It's very hard to hard to defend guys like that. So. Yeah, that's not the Knights team, but <clears throat> like you said, it's it's very impressive. They were a team that showed up without their best player, and the Knights couldn't match it. So that's that's what I kind of take away. And Oilers essentially, they took care of business last night, they, and they did a fantastic job. They they put that splinter of doubt into a team, especially in in the case of Aiden Hill, who dominated the Oilers in last year in the playoffs. I think the fact that they've They've kind of broken the shell there a little bit. Can uh, can go a long way. It's hard when you go. <clears throat> excuse me. When you go into the playoffs as a goalie, you kind of you you look back on all your pat. There's one point, or obviously with Aiden Hill, you look no further than last year. But there's points where you you just your game's at such a high level, and it's you know you're seeing the puck. You, it's almost the other people that shoot on you have to do something so perfect to score, and it it's hard to get to that level and the fact that Aiden Hill is injured and and Logan Thompson you know they've they've both been not consistent enough with their game to get it to that level um it's going to be very difficult over the next what five games they have left to to get that uh 
that car in the right window, so to speak. <laughs> Although they're they're far enough up on was it St. Louis behind them that that they don't need to worry about losing their spot. They, I think they can just focus on okay, let's just work on our game so we're ready for the playoffs, as yeah. opposed to oh, what happens if we don't make it? Because they should make it. They they should, but yeah. now they're in the, they're, there's a delicate spot because the Golden Knights sit three points up on the Blues with the game in hand. So they have that, but you got to win yeah. that game in hand to make it happen. The Blues only have three games left this season, but the Golden the Golden Knights need at least one or two more wins here yeah. to officially clinch it. Um, I think this is this is great for the Oilers in the sense of it looks like right now doesn't matter where the Oilers finish first or second in the Pacific. Um, the Golden Knights aren't going to catch the Preds. No. Which means they're headed to the Central. And the Oilers don't have to potentially face the Golden Knights at all, potentially. But if it would be, it'd only be in the conference finals, mm -hmm. which means you then only have to either face one of Dallas, Colorado, Winnipeg, or Vegas. You don't have to go through Vegas at one point in the Pacific and then go through it either a Dallas, Colorado, or a Winnipeg. And I think that opens up things up so much more for the Edmonton Oilers. So how does it <clears throat> stack up this morning? So it's As of right now, so now the Oilers are two games, have two games in hand on the Canucks, yeah. four points back. However, the Canucks have the tiebreaker. So the Oilers need to... So it's in, in, yeah. in effect, the Canucks have a five-point lead mm -hmm. with the Oilers having two games in hand, but they do play on Saturday, which will be a pivotal game. But as of right now, the Stars would get the Golden Knights, the Avs would get the Jets, Canucks would get the Preds, Oilers would get the Kings. I like it. I like that path for the Oilers. Yeah, that's. they couldn't... I don't think it could be any better, really. Unless the Oilers actually... They're not going to play the, the Knights anyway at this point because you're not going to catch Dallas. Um, yeah, the only way is if the Golden Knights, they're three back with a game in hand on the Preds. Yeah. If they turn their game around and the Golden Knights start winning some hockey games again, maybe they catch the Predators and then stay back in the Pacific. Who do the Golden Knights have the rest of this way? They get the Wilds on Friday. They get the Avs. They get the Blackhawks and they get the Ducks. So three and one potentially. It's tough playing those teams that are dusting off the TaylorMades too at the end of the year because they're... They got nothing to lose, you yeah. know, and you're trying to get points, and it's crucial that you score first and just let those guys dream of hitting fairways and greens Then, rather than, oh, we can win one before the end of the year here. This is great. <laughs> so. Well, and also those guys are potentially playing for a job next year because how many guys in a bottom mm -hmm. five team, yeah. you know, they're back in the AHL, they're in Europe, yeah. and they've, they've lost their last shot to play in the NHL. So they're like, no, I better impress the coach. So they're motivated too. You know, they may not be going to the playoffs, but they're like, I want a job. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to play in the best league in the world. We saw that. We said that a lot about the Oilers in the just decades of darkness. <laughs> These guys need to play for their jobs. You know, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're out there trying to earn it. It was a year long training camp for for the World Championships in some of those years. The Preds, though, by the way, uh, they take on the Blackhawks, Blue Jackets, Penguins. So it's like even if the Golden Knights win the hockey games, the Predators aren't dropping a lot no. of points, or they shouldn't at the yeah. very least. So, I, like, look, I think the Oilers beat it, beat the Kings in a series, best of seven. I like their chances very much. I think they own the LA Kings. I think there's a very good chance the Preds knock off the Canucks in the first round. If that were to happen, yeah, Soros could win you a couple of games, I think. But the Oilers match up extremely well against the Predators, too. I think the path is, look, they got to go win games and everyone's, oh, you got to go, you know, it's not that easy. But the Oilers should be in the Western Conference Final at that point if, if this is what they're looking at right now. I like that Dallas night series that's big boy that's someone's gonna come out of there bumped beaten. and bruised and and beaten down a little bit right that's uh and it's plus when when they add all those guys back because <laughs> that's what that's what will eventually happen i was surprised hurdle didn't uh didn't impress <clears throat> i mean it's got to be hard he's been injured for a while but i was looking for little glimpses and i think he had one good hit who did he blow up i think it was mcleod and i was like oh okay so there's there's definitely some physical play there, but no, there wasn't. Uh, doesn't wasn't much from old Tomas last last night. Well, and it's all fine that us as fans are saying, "Oh, we like this matchup." Oh, yeah, they should. But you know, you really hope the players are, you know, just looking at what's in front of them and yeah. saying, "Yeah, we're just gonna," you know, because we can talk all we want, but uh, you, you hope the players are like, "No, it doesn't matter who we face. It's you know, we're, we're not going to hope for anybody." Yeah, I liked the. Uh, 
the lion combinations. I, Did you? Uh, yeah, I, I liked seeing, and it's it's weird when your best guy's out and watching the power play. I don't. It's a great power play, but I I felt like they were using everyone a lot better because the default is always to get get it to Connor so he can he can start creating and stuff but i it did look like a bunch of guys that you know i i like that net front presence with Kane um and and Hyman switching so you had that double like Connor kind of floats and and goes all over the place but yeah to me it was very difficult just looking at from a from a goalie's view because now okay i always have someone in front of me either side it switches cuz these guys and I'm worried about rebound control because there's a guy right there ready to ready to pounce on this thing. I always always did a good job of funneling pucks to the to the middle too, and that's creating that chaos. So um, maybe Connor comes off the power play. I don't know. <laughs> I, to me, it sounds like you're just fully laying the groundwork for get rid of Connor. This no, team's I, better without Connor. They don't need the crutch of yeah, Connor. Yeah. Connor's weighing this team down. They're yeah. getting lazy over He's there. an anchor. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just relies too much on Connor. They're better without Connor. Uh, I think your chat's going to blow up. <laughs> we'll clip that one and get that uh, one going. Uh, they're going to firebomb the building. Does anybody know what this building is? <laughs> only nasty stuff. Yeah. <laughs> only some... You know, that's actually one thing we've actually been really good at keeping locked down. Even if you put a picture up, it'd be hard for people to find, yeah. I think, our location. So, yeah, I was, when I good. first showed up, I was like, where? <laughs> it's great. It is and good. we still don't even have the sign outside. It's just inside, just yep. the one global headquarters. Um, okay, so with Connor, I wouldn't play him in both games. It's a back to back coming up. Would you? No. Even if he says he's, he's good to go, would you, would you only play him in? One or would you play him in both? Just one. Like he, he's ready. He doesn't need these games to tune up. And what's to be gained? Like I don't think he cares about getting more points and being in the running for their Art Ross. I don't think he cares about you know if he looks better for a, for a heart. There's one trophy he wants. You know, but like who am I to say that? But you know, well he says that everything yeah. you he, looked well, at. He talked about a couple weeks ago about. It was brought up the heart race or whatever, and he went, I only care about the one right now. Yeah, so if he can be, you know, even 5% more healed or better, like, it's like, yeah, sit him. Okay, so then which game does he play? Do you play him against the Coyotes where you should be able to beat them no matter what? They did beat the Canucks yesterday. I will say that in overtime, so credit to them. Or do you save him for the big game against the Canucks where you're trying to win the Pacific? Or do you hold him off against the Canucks just because, you know what, if you want to play the Canucks, you might meet them in the playoffs. You don't want them doing anything, let's say, with Connor in that game. How would you approach this with Connor in terms of which game you'd want to play if you were Chris Knobloch? Um, I I play him against the Canucks. It's a, it's a more meaningful game. Yeah. Um, this is a team you might have to play eventually. Uh, I. I think he he'll get an assist in that game. I'm quite confident. I would I would definitely go to Coolbet and put some put some money on that. Um, but saying like so when you he doesn't care about points and I uh, and I, I agree with that. But it, you know if we look at we were talking about ESPN thirty for thirty things like Magic Bird those those, those rivalries with with those top players. I don't think Connor cares about the but he he has the internal competition against the other best guys in the league right so it's yeah it's about points but he wants to outperform everyone else that's what that's what motivates you when you get into the caliber of of those types of professional athletes like you hear about bird and 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 magic as soon as they finished a game although they didn't play against you they were checking to see how the other guy did right oh okay he had this i had this so and the eventually meeting up later and going head to head so i think that Michael Jordan talked about it all the time. That's what motivated him, and I think there's a part to that. No, he doesn't care about points, but he wants to be the best player, and I'm sure that uh, that, that adds to it a little bit. Well, I think that's why he went for goals last year. Like the year before Matthews hit, was it 60 or whatever it was? He yeah. Had, I think 50 goals in 50 games yeah. in the stretch or whatever it was. And there's no, I don't think it's a coincidence at all that last year Connor was scoring goals. He said, like, next year I wouldn't be stunned if he goes for 70. Yeah. Because he sees what Matthew's done this year, everyone talking about this, and he's going, I'm going to hit 70 next year. Like, 
I'll show you guys. This mm-hmm. is, I did the assist this year. Next year, I'll go for the 70 goals and stuff. He just has that. You, you could just see it in him that when he sets his mind out to something, that's his focus, and that's what he gets done. Or it's just... 170 points, right? That's he's just gonna go nuclear. And that is the one guy. goals, 100 assists. Yeah, yeah, why not? What a ridiculous season! <laughs> well, there's... and I wouldn't bet against it. No, that's the it's... thing. If if we sat here at the start of next season, what Connor's gonna go 70 100? Yes or no? I'll go yes because if Connor wants it, Connor will get it done actually. Well, just the maturity of this team, too. Everyone seems to be getting a better. You know what? I Another thing, uh, just remind me, I loved the Nuge last night, um, taking more of a role. Like, he was he was a dominating force in the offensive zone. You can, all the people, oh, you know, Nuge, he's not do, he doesn't do a lot. You really, without Connor, you actually could see all the little things that, that he does as well. It's uh it was, yeah, that was a great game last night. Jeez, that was they were they were impressive. But um, yeah, trade Connor, I guess. <laughs> it's there. It's there. He uh, said the words. I, I'm leaving now because this building is going to get firebombed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice You're talking part to of you the show now. Everyone's going to be like, oh, Coach no. Pete Gager and Awanek all said this, even though it's uh, Gager. And <laughs> don't gonna trade. Your phone's going to be blowing up. Connor, don't trade. I don't. But it's it's a it's nice to. To see a team, what how deep they actually are, right? And different players looking at Holloway coming in and playing the way he did. I don't take a ton of stock in it because the 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 Knights weren't the the Vegas Golden Knights, but um, impressive performance by him as well with that little bit extra speed. And he's such a he's such a sponge. And I, what I mean by that is he just he takes in a lot. Like he's he listen like he's a probably a great player to coach. Maybe we should get him on our team. He'd probably be pretty good. But um, you see him talking with people, and he's just wide eyed, right? And doing extra stuff after practice. And you know, there was one point la- last night where when uh, Bouchard got tripped, he's jumping up pointing like he's into it you know everyone else is sitting down that's that's a guy that's really engaged in the game he comes off and you see if if one of his line mates is talking to him and he's just like nodding yes yes yeah right you know he's he's taking a ton in right now that's uh i was impressed with uh, that t- side of him last night that's that you know that that's a really good sign like you know yeah. it, it's good to see that you know obviously he really wants he wants to stay up he doesn't want to go back down to <laughs> Bakersfield. And, yeah, hopefully he can keep the same energy and it doesn't, you know, trail off after a couple of games. <laughs> I'll talk to Pierdo about next year for the heavy hockey team. Okay. I'll talk to I'll, I'll put the one player. We can get one player, you know. Just, great. We, we can help any guy. There's got to be the conditioning stint or something. Just, we'll get their level up a little bit, build some confidence. Um, just actually quickly on the corner trade thing. <laughs> I'm just going to say this. like no, no, no. I don't think you'd ever actually get true value if you tried trading him. Well, what would this is? Like- I don't think you could get an like in with the cap, with the, the everything that goes into it. I don't think you could actually put Connor on the block and get proper value in return for what he brings this team. No. Cause- like, because you would want. A forward to replace some of what he does. And you'd also probably then want a defenseman or something. Yeah. Cap-wise, probably right there, it's not going to work that well. I don't think you could actually ever trade a Connor and potentially get even like the proper value for what he does for a team. Is there and, anyone that could go one for one with him in the league? I don't the closest would be McKinnon. Yeah. I think if you want McKinnon McDavid, you're the closest that you're going one for one. I think you get well. I don't think there's another player I would consider one for one. McCarr for, Connor for me would be. Uh, I would I would put McCarr ahead of McKinnon actually. Well, you know what's funny? I've had this conversation. If I was if the NHL did all players went into a draft, and yeah. the fantasy league type thing, and you had to draft your teams from scratch, brand new, I would take McCarr ahead of McDavid because the franchise defenseman, the pillar of that, yeah. is huge. But right now, I don't think I would trade McDavid for a Makar when I have him. No, that's no, not well. Yeah, no, no, you couldn't. But I think if you know, in a certain scenario, if but the Avs like, and the thing is with that, like the Avs wouldn't do that. 
I don't think the Avs would sit there and be like, we'll give you McKinnon for McDavid. If you if Ken Holland or he wants to burn this team to the ground before he's officially done and says McDavid's no. on the block. Like, I don't think they would offer that. No. So see, that's where it's like you're looking at other teams. They're building packages. I don't think you legitimately could ever actually create a package that would be of value for Connor McDavid. It would be all their first rounders for the next 10 years, too. <laughs> Plus all their best players <laughs> yeah, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You'd completely deplete them. So yeah. we're good. He's not going anywhere. He's no, not going. That's good. Okay. That's good. Nah. Gager doesn't didn't cause any any real problems there. We're <laughs> no more Lindros trades that build Stanley Cup contenders. It's a bygone era. I'm that was that yeah, that, that was pre cap, so Oh yeah. Yeah, way pre cap. Like, well even pre cap would be tough to get the value. Well, it'd that, be easier. But you like that one team trying to like you're depleting your team completely. To get Connor. Well, that trade with the, the Lindros trade, um, I remember reading in the hockey news. <laughs> I think it was two years or three years later. They pulled all the GMs in the league and asked them if they would make. They wouldn't just do that. They would trade Forsberg for Lindros one, one for one. And only two GMs said they would do the trade. So who point. are they getting? Just well, the trade was what it was. Lindros, yeah, no, but for, they're getting who on the trade? Just Lindros and Peter Forsberg. But as the GM, they're they're getting Forsberg or they're getting Lindros. What he, they're getting, they would make the trade for for if they had Forsberg, okay, they would trade getting him for, Lindros for Forsberg. Yeah, okay. yeah, they wouldn't do it. They would keep Forsberg. Matt Forsberg was good. He was a joke. Him, Hey Duke, Sakic. Oh my gosh. Foot on the blue line. Patty Juan Net. Those Avs teams. Like I know they took down the Oilers once and were a little bit of a rival of the Oilers, but they were fun to watch. They were awesome, man. I, I I've told this story. It was one of the best games I've ever seen in my life. I was sitting on the bench, but uh, it was us in the old Pepsi Center, I think it was called back then, mm-hmm. and uh, we had Ryan Smith, Bill Guerin, Doug Waite. They were the best line in hockey, and it was just a heavyweight tilt. And just back and forth and hard nosed. And then <laughs> we were talking about weird, like uh, Stuart Skinner on the bench when, when things go awry. But uh, uh, Bob Hartley double shifted Forsberg and Sackick, and it was four minutes, and they the game was here. It went to there. They scored two goals. It was They were up 4 2. And uh, we took a penalty late. And I remember uh, Hartley threw out Forsberg's, like, his number one penalty kill or power play with, like, a minute and a half left. And so the game was over, and Mac T lost it. Like, he was yelling at him, went to the went to the glass and was, like, wanted to get it Hartley. And, and I still remember uh, Mike Greer popped up, and Sackett was coming out. And he goes, hey, Joe, this is BS. What are you guys doing? And Joe just... Sackick just kind of went like this, like back to Hartley. He was like, hey, I don't, he put us out here, you know. And they just kind of passed the puck around or whatever. But Hartley wanted, he was a jerk. He was such a jerk, that Hartley. What a, I hate him. <laughs> I hate that guy. Tell us how you really feel. Oh, my gosh. This guy, I said this before. He, We were playing them in the nice Calder book. Cup final, and he had his trainer <laughs> going to the Ducks, the, the, uh, the air conditioning ducts dropped down in our room and measured our sticks. No way. Yeah. He went full, like, movie thing. Yeah. In Hershey, the old, where their Wilt the Stilt got 100 points. He had his trainer go in and drop down and measure our sticks after uh, at, at night. Not even sneak in. Well, we didn't or- find this out till the the, tr- the well, there was all the old skate sharpeners, the blade masters, the big, huge red thing. Huh? So... There, it was funny because you'd go into trainers' rooms everywhere, and they had this big team picture of all the a- NHL and AHL uh, equipment managers. They'd take the big Blade Master because they'd all go away to like whatever Vegas and say they were learning how to sharpen skates. They could never do it right, but no. And uh, so he, the, at this meeting the next year, came back, and uh, one of our trainers goes, "Yeah, he." Uh, he confirmed it. The trainer for Hershey said that he crawled through the the, the air ducts, dropped into our room, which was really quite impressive because it was a high ceiling, and uh, that might he might have broken an ankle or something. But yeah, because uh, we took a penalty in the first period, 
and they called an illegal stick right away. And you gotta you gotta say what it was for back then, right? You don't see these calls anymore. So they knew the width, the thickness, the curve, whatever. They were calling the exact thing. And so they were five on three, boom, they scored. So I think they scored another one. And then we took another penalty and they called it again. So they were just Oh, they cheated. They did it well. Well you though. guys cheated too. How did we cheat? Illegal sticks. Oh come on. Well, I just you, you, you can't you got Did, called for a penalty. Yeah, but to keep doing it, like it's it, fine. But you got called on no, it, and, and it was illegal. So you go in the penalty box. It's not that is cheating. Yeah, but yeah, no, it's not cheating. Everyone. Then has, why are you getting a penalty for it and going in the box? Because their freaking trainer jumped yes. through a thing and looked but at his the rule books that you're against the rules. So that's the cheating. Half the time, how that's they how got the, the info was. It's two wrongs don't make it right here. Half the time, the sticks. It, it was how they came. Too like it was. It looked we looked like a lumber yard at the next game because everyone shit like we had to shave down or this is when you they didn't just come straight out of the pack. And I'm sure the sticks now are illegal, half of them are they just don't call that. I don't know if the rules are changed, but it was awful. And he only played like two and a half lines, so they they would run out of gas, like they were tired. So there was <laughs> it, they, uh, they told a guy just to pretend you're hurt, so he'd lay down the ice. Their trainer came out 30 times one game because... <laughs> this is football. Yeah. This, or sorry. Like in, yes, football, yeah. in football, it's known that the special teams guy all of a sudden... Matthew Bertrand was good for this one. Just go down. And yeah. you go, oh, well, here comes the trainer. Or they need a little break here. Or in soccer, every so often, somebody will go down. Milan Borion for Canada Soccer was known for every so often just dropping him. Like, ah, just to give them a breather. Yeah. i never seen it in hockey. <laughs> J- uh, in the... Previous series, they played against Springfield. And I talked to the guys that played on, they said this was the worst series I've ever been a part of. Uh, Jean Francois Labbe, he was with the Oilers for a bit. He had to take a deuce during the game. And he was like, and so he, he was like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? They had a guy, like, he just all of a sudden he goes, go down, go down. So the play's in the other end and they're laying down. They're going, hey, hey. He laid on the on the ice in Springfield, LeBay races off, <laughs> goes, takes a dump, and comes back. Took like 15 minutes because he had stomach issues or something. Then as soon as he came back, the guy got up and played. So it was <laughs> unbelievable. That's why, yeah, Hartley, not my favorite person. So I've learned two things for next year. We send someone in to measure sticks. Yes. <laughs> and we need to take time. Like we, we used all of our timeouts. When we need more timeouts... Injuries. We have a couple predetermined guys. Like, hey, we tap the left elbow. Drop. <laughs> we'll send out. A, we'll send out Eric to go yeah. tr- treat them, and and we'll give you guys all breathers. The NHLers. So oh. we could put you guys back on the ice, perfect, perfect. so that you guys could keep running things, and we dominate this heavy hockey showdown next year. That was funny too, because uh, in Hershey, it's where the the ch- chocolate factory is, yeah. right? So um, the whole rink reeks of chocolate which is it's nice but also a little bit annoying but they would they would bring in these like big two liter styrofoam things of hot chocolate that were just delicious i don't know what was in there and a bunch of hershey's kisses so we were all messed up on chocolate too that was that was dirty but i when i went to the factory like uh, just on the on a day off and uh mankind was there mick foley no way. Yeah, oh. with his wife. Very attractive woman with their two kids. But he was dressed as Mick Foley. He had a, like... Well, in fact, he's not going to go around as mankind everywhere. No, but he had sweats and, oh, and okay. like, and like his, what, plaid? The red plaid red jacket plaid. rest. That's what he was rest. wearing. Oh, okay. And I was like, <laughs> Mick. And he's like, no, he's there, whatever. Mick Foley, mankind, dude love, cactus jack. Yeah. Who am I missing? Or have I nailed them all? I think I've nailed him. It was funny that he was in Harrisburg or whatever. That's the town or whatever. But uh, yeah, a real nice guy. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about him. Awesome. He guy. was a great wrestler. Oh, he was I, awesome. Mr. Socko. Oh, when he'd come out. Yeah. Um, what was the character? Backlash in Edmonton in 04, was it? He got in a, he had a like no holds bar match with Randy Orton. I think it was Cactus Jack. First Randy Orton. He tried to take like a barbed wire bat and light it on fire. Oh, really? Eric Bischoff came out and was like, oh, the fire marshal's going to shut this down. And oh, and he didn't light it on fire. Everyone tried to and it didn't happen. Oh, and it was, ah, oh, so oh, I love going to wrestling shows. His body must be just 
beaten up from all the stuff he did. Oh, yeah. I can't imagine any of those bodies for those wrestlers. Like, the amount of, like, we, we see them on TV, on Raw or SmackDown, or twice a week. Then, well, actually, now it's generally only one, you're on one of them, not the two. You get the pay-per-view once a month or something. But all the house shows that people don't see that happens throughout the year. Like, the amount of times those guys and girls are on the road fighting, you know, like, it's a toll. That it's, like, as, I, I don't, I don't want to see most of them as they age because it's just... Sad. It's very sad. Yeah. Like, if you sometimes, well, I look at Bret Hart and oh, I just yeah. go, like, there's... Somebody that we all love, like just around his story about his family, like so many people around him that have passed. And it's just like, it's a very sad story in the end for a guy that. Have you, uh, there was a new height. movie, the, the Von Arks. Have you watched that at all? No. I haven't watched any of those like wrestling docs or something. What? I know my, uh, at Easter, I think it was. Yeah. My dad and my cousin were talking about it this past weekend. It was like dark side of the ring. That, that's and amazing. Like, and I haven't seen any of them. I like that takes me back. Cause I remember, well, I, I'm of a certain vintage where wrestling was different back then, but yeah, I remember all those guys, yeah. and they were just the larger count with than his, with the claw. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. But um, that Von Ark movie with uh, Zac Efron, uh, I hear it's fantastic. Like they actually showed the movie theater when it was done, and half the movie theater's crying. I mean, it's a it's a sad story. Those Von Arks that that was like there's some curse that. Uh, that they that poor family went through, but yeah, that's a I got to watch that one because I love those old wrestling stories. They're they're great. That Mickey Rourke, the wrestler. Have you ever watched that? I haven't. That's yeah, a, that's a fantastic movie. Mickey Rourke's a mess, but whatever. It's Art. almost like he lived his life to become that character. Yeah, yeah it was perfect. <laughs> yeah, it uh, it Art was imitating life in that in that uh, in that scenario for sure. I Art. miss the glory years of wrestling. Late '90s, the Attitude Era. Oh yeah, when Stone Cold hit his peak. Yeah, with his war against Vince McMahon, and The Rock was still there, and The Rock had just left. Um, man, what was that group he was with before he was just The Rock? It was oh, like the Federation. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. that's gonna bother me until I figure that one out. Um, and then Degeneration X, and with Triple H, and. Shane Michaels and seeing the Bret Hart get screwed and then him go to WCW and then the whole WCW versus WWE yeah. battle that ensued because Shane Michaels and Shane uh, uh, Stephanie they bought it and like as a kid I thought legitimately there was a real war here oh, yeah. I didn't realize oh, yeah. that the WWE <laughs> yeah. owned WCW and I was legit <laughs> concerned the WCW was going to defeat the WWE and it was going to be all WCW and oh, Kurt Angle saved the WWE over the stone, like Stone Cold turned. Ah, oh, it was that sucked me in every Monday and Friday or Thursday or whatever it was back in the day. Great I remember, drama. Oh, oh, it was fantastic. It, it was the male soap opera. Who needs yeah. Young and the Restless in Days of Our Lives? <laughs> exactly. We've got this going on. I remember when Ric Flair came to the WWF, and I actually I was playing junior in Portland. We went to the match with with Hogan and Flair, and oh. Flair came like the Nature Boy, and his ah oh, was just like. And I don't know, I don't, that's the only big wrestling event I went to. The uh, fans of wrestling, that's a different breed altogether. Like, I couldn't believe some of the clientele at that thing. It was great because there was one kid in front of us, and he, he might have weighed like 110 pounds, but he had a Hulkamania shirt on. Yeah. And he was, when Hulk came out, and he got up and he had the bandana and he did everything like this, this. And we were, uh, we were like, yes. And we were pointing at him and he was like giving us the thing, like giving us. And then he tore his shirt off and looked at us. And I was like, this is the most disturbing thing I've ever seen. <laughs> but he was awesome, man. It was, he was worth the price of admission on, on his own. It was great. Wrestling towns go to have a good time. Yeah. And they want to be part of it and they want to have their chance. It's a great time, which is funny because then. When AEW came to town last year, Yukon Jack from the Bear, big wrestling fan. His kids are big into it. They went with Lieutenant Eric, his brother Lucas, a <laughs> bunch of buddies, like a wrestling group. And the kids were getting into it, yelling chants. And there was a couple in front of them that was mad that they were chanting and kept turning around, like to almost telling them to just shut up. And the worst, like the one thing you do is like, okay, that group especially, you don't tell them to stop oh, <laughs> because no. now it was yeah. they turned their attention from the rink and being part of the show to them and yeah. they just gave it to them the rest of the show and like again it's like 
of all the people too is like the worst group of people <laughs> because they are so good, so quick, yeah. witty. Like they they they'll come at you and they will hurt you with their words and stuff. Um, but like also like kids just having fun at a, a wrestling show and you're telling them to be like quiet. Like it's a wrestling show. Why are you yeah. at a wrestling show? Yeah, yeah. That's like going to. Charles Edward Cheese and tell the kids to be quiet, right? That's that's the wrong place to do that. Nation of Domination. Oh, there it is. Mm. That's yeah. what it was. Well, that Farouk was, was part of that, yeah. and that was that was some good times. SmackDown is coming back to town. So really, yeah. I've never seen Raw. I've been to SmackDown. I've seen a house show. I've seen a pay per view. I've never seen Raw. When it came here last time, I didn't go. I, I gave my ticket away. Um, What's the difference though? It's just being there. I don't know. Just to, <laughs> just to say I was at Raw. Okay. I never got to Raw. Monday Night Raw. And it was That's like, what it was. Back, it was Raw is War, WWF. You know, like, that's their staple show. That's great. Yeah. No, I remember, well, my buddies renting. <laughs> God. It was just like that Mike Tyson fight. that We had to go to the cable place to get the box the decoder box yeah to hook up to our tv to get watch wrestlemania <laughs> i think it was like three or something like that three or four and it was just a huge huge production couldn't wait hulkster comes out and does his thing it was vince mcmahon he uh he did it right that's for sure piece of crap piece of crap but he did it right <laughs> yeah awful person speaking yeah. of awful people how about uh the juice 76 was it 76 uh with uh from cancer uh he passed away today the oj simpson announcing that 76 um we were talking about before the show which is like i don't think we'd ever see a a a sports story the similar like that one you hope not well but like i like i don't know if there's anything that would transcend like it took over everything yeah. We're talking the ESPN 30 yeah. for 30 that they had of June, whatever day it was. I forgot which day it was, where it was Knicks Eastern Conference final game, Rangers parade, um, the opening of the 94 World Cup in Kansas City. I can't remember what else was going on. And they just clipped all those together and how they just kept cutting into the car chase, the car chase, the car chase. Would that happen now? Or like you would just go to CNN, I think, or Fox and all that. And then you'd still watch your sports or it's like... Yeah. It just it, to me, I, I was too young for that time that I just don't know how big it fully was. I guess. Well, and or, and then yeah. the trial just became, <laughs> you know, it was almost twenty four seven. Like it was, it was just there, and you couldn't escape it. Like you would have to crawl under a rock and not hear something about you know the gloves don't fit. You must have quit, and and all the stuff that came out of that, and just incessant every single day. You know, Lance Ito. Like, who knows a judge's name? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Marsha Clark, Christopher Darden, yeah. Johnny Cochran, the Kardashians. Robert Kardashian. Robert, just F. Lee Bailey. Who else was in there? Just, yeah. Cra- Dershowitz, too. Like, you know all these guys' names? It, uh, not funny, but I remember I was with the Oilers when the... When the verdict came out, and we were practicing, oh, of course, we're all watching it first, and then we uh, we practiced, and um, during practice, Joe Moss comes out, gets on the bench, gets on the top, like the dasher, and starts waving his arms <laughs> like a bird, saying, OJ's free. That's, that's, what, that's what Mosser did. We had to, I fell down laughing. It was hilarious. He was, and Moss was saying, he's free, he's free. And I was just like, oh, my God. Unbelievable. So, Spency Five Cents he says, Thanks, OJ, for raising prices on white Broncos. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's weird. It's like he eventually went to jail, but it was for like robbery of memorabilia and stuff. And you know, he got a harsher penalty than he deserved for that crime. Oh, yeah. Because of him not getting punished for yeah. the other crime. Yeah. I loved, well, I didn't love but have, seeing him w- during, uh, it might have even been his, like, parole hearing or whatever. And here he, he's <laughs> killed two people. Um, it was a serial. Allegedly. Oh, God. <laughs> and uh, and then he's basically kidnapping and, and extortion with some other guy. But he, in his parole hearing, he's saying, I'm not. I'm not a violent guy. <laughs> like, just like, oh my gosh, yeah, no, that's. I'm. Uh, I'm usually I'm not happy to see someone go, but him, 
That's uh, you're not going to shed a tear. No, no, not for him. That was uh, well. He, he wanted to do the book. I didn't what, how I how do I would have done it. Yeah, like you know how I'm commenting uh-huh. on like the the burying of bodies or like he actually wanted to publish a book of if I had done it, this is how I would have done yeah. it, which yeah. basically just sounded like no, this is your confession without you saying it's an actual confession. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, and you know making money off of like well that's why there's laws about that. That you you know you, you can't profit from your crime. Yeah. So oh yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think that the number of okay. states have laws like that that it, it it prevents criminals from then turning around and and doing a book about all the evil things they did and oh yeah I'm gonna make a lot of money all off profiting this. on that and stuff. Yeah. That makes sense. Although jurors are allowed in the states to talk well, to media and stuff after whatever. And yeah. Do write those things, but you can't do that in Canada. There was uh, one of the jurors in the civil trial. She there was a whole HBO show, and I remember. She was talking how... Is this the Made in America one you're talking no, about? No, no, this, okay. is, this is old. Um, she was talking about just of her, of her experience on the jury. And there was one cross where, you know, she, she explains that OJ is getting mad. Like, you could see him, like, clenching his fists, his jaw. Like, he's, he's getting mad at this guy for grilling him. And they, they went to a recess because it was getting a little bit heated. And after the recess, came back... And she said it was a completely different person on the on the stand. She said, and he was just docile and very monotone answers. <clears throat> and she wrote in her notes drugs because it was almost like he went and took like some Valium and just or just completely chilled maybe, out. Yeah, just completely chilled out and didn't have any emotion after that. I can just imagine how the Las Vegas police. <laughs> Would be uh, ripping on LAPD after they got him convicted. Yeah. And like, yeah, we got right. it done, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. I bet. Oh my gosh! You're yeah. welcome. We we finished it off. Uh, I've told this story before. Uh, Mark Majot back at the old place. He actually called OJ or tried calling OJ in jail. Really? He called the jail place and he went, "Can I speak to?" Him? I think he went with the full name too, and they just like hung up on him or something. <laughs> and he recorded it. I really hope Mijo has that audio still somewhere. Oh my um, god! But yeah, he attempted to just say, hey, "Just like why not?" And just called, and we had we had long distance calling at the old place, so I figured he'd give it a try. What, what could go wrong? Oh Worst thing gosh. they could do is say no, and that's what they did. Yeah. Best thing is maybe they would have put OJ on the line with them. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah, that's good. James saw in the ne- as Sean the Nasty Chest says, I think he did publish a book, the book called If I Did It. Um, I thought I think it got pulled as it was happening, though, because mm. like, there was an outrage to be like, what are you yeah. trying to do here, OJ? Like, yeah. this is now just a confession. And then there was just, I think the publisher pulled it back or something. I don't know if it ever actually fully was for sale. If it was, I'd love to rent a copy from the library so there's no money given. Yeah. <laughs> but I would love to read that and see... What he had to say about it, because what is this? What a, <laughs> he was. What a I hate to what say a life it. story to, to go through. I I mean I I found uh, like he was on Twitter right, and he would talk yeah. about current events and things, and the comments on it oh. were. <laughs> I I watched it for the comments, and they were like, "Oh, oh Juice, you're you're killing it," or whatever, <laughs> you know. Just, <laughs> just it was everyone was just all of them. All of them were something referring to to the murder, but uh, God, oh well. Uh, this is the ESD Hango presented by White Claw Hard Seltzer, the hard seltzer that started the wave made with refreshingly real flavors for their iconic taste. White Claw, the difference is clear. Matawanek, Joaquin Gage, Coach Pete from uh, Team ESD at the Heavy Hockey Showdown with you here on EdmontonSportsTalk.com. Tune in, iHeartRadio, as well as those watching on YouTube. Uh, we are probably about 15, 20 minutes away from our keyword for the ESD. Fly away to Las Vegas. Thanks to our partners, Fly YEG and the LVCVA. Nonstop flights to over 50 destinations. Your Sports trip starts with a nonstop flight from FlyYEG. Visit flyyeg.com for more information. Portions of this hour of the ESD Hangout are presented by the High Product Marketing, official merch partner of Edmonton Sports Talk, promotional, promotional products that bring the buzz. Be sure to check them out at the highproductmarketing.com. Uh, someone in the nasty chat earlier mentioned something about EST car flags oh. and waiting for the oh. announcement of that. And I think the Morning Boys talked about that yesterday. Um, it's not a bad idea. I'll say this right now. It's not in the plans at the moment. So, well, how about uh, just seeing the uh, the 
the hats at certain games outside of Edmonton. That's, too. Where, that's where I'm noticing them. Yeah. They're not at the Edmonton games. Yeah. They're, they're when they're in Calgary and St. Louis and stuff. It's uh, that's impressive. That's it's uh, it's nice to see that uh, the merch has traveled well. I like it. And we it need looks something good. overseas. You know? <laughs> overseas? How far have I sent one? Yeah, I've been, I've only, we've only gone in the Canada and the U.S. Okay. There's someone that's he's back in May. He'd been gone for all these months. I think Evil Twin. He's out somewhere in Asia, and he didn't want to pay, like, have us pay for the shipping oh. to go there. So he's got to pick up his stuff here. So that was maybe the closest. But yeah, we need to. I've been asked a lot about merch, just to let you know. EdmontonSportsTalk.com, yeah. com shop ESD at the top. Are you telling them that? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, but I think <laughs> they want me to give them stuff. But uh, well, yeah, no, I. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very protective. They, they where where do I get this stuff? So it's uh, it's hot items. That's which is great. You got the hoodie and the hat. And the hat. And yes. you got the ball cap. Yes. That's what it was. So that was... Um, we've got some more hats coming in, actually. Those Sweet. are on order. So well, we we almost... We ran out of them. I shouldn't say almost ran out. We actually ran out of them, and now I've got to, to get some more, and people want in on that. So it's good. I actually don't like wearing a hat that I like to a hockey game. <laughs> just in case. Like, just in case. <laughs> you know, I, I've got uh, the... Um, the Heritage Classic cap from the game in Winnipeg. Okay. And I wore it to a game once, and I was like, oh, this is bad move. This could be bad. And fortunately, no hat tricks. So it's like, okay. So it stays home now. It doesn't go to games. I don't think you have to throw your hat. It is a hat trick. If you like that hat, you damn well keep wearing that hat. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just feel compelled, though. So I, I actually have a hat. It's like, okay, it's an Oilers hat, but it's not really one that I like the logo that much. Like, okay, this is my game hat. So It's your hat trick hat. Exactly. It's probably a pretty good marketing idea to buy hat trick hats, you know, and you pay. the Maybe the proceeds go to something. So you buy it at the game, and then you can throw it. That's what I'd do. Yeah, but the same thing is like the younger people too. You go to the game, it's, it's your, your fashion, right? You got your jer yeah. jer uh, jersey over your hoodie. You've picked out your hat, whatever it might be. You don't want a, an average hat sometimes. You just you want your specific hat that you spent $50 on or 55 for a new era type thing. I don't think you have to throw that hat. Would you be looked on as a bad fan if you don't throw your hat during a hat trick? Oh, yeah. Really? I had to tell him. He's a pissed off pal. Breaking news from Formula One. Fernando oh. Alonso has signed a multi year deal oh. with Aston Martin. Uh, Serbia Brett, I'll nice. sing No Way I'm Throwing That Hat. So I'll just quickly throw that one. Multi years. So let's go look at F1? this. F1 fan? Uh, a little bit. A little bit? My, my sister's huge. I actually bought her tickets. Really? Yeah, oh yeah. She's she's actually a more informed and better sports fan than I am. <laughs> like especially when it comes to CFL. Yeah. Like I'll I'll say, "Hey Kelly, what's 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 that rule? What happened there? Yeah. Why is this?" And she'd be like, "Oh yeah. Okay, oh, no you way. idiot." And yeah, she'll she'll school me. And she's huge in the F1. Uh I I actually bought her tickets to the Montreal Grand Prix like oh, did years you? ago. She 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 flew herself there. But, uh, you know, it was a lot cheaper than it is yeah, now yeah, for those yeah. things. But I think one of her bucket list things is to go over to Europe and go to an F1 there. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm retired now. I'll, okay. Sweet. And she was like, you better start saving because it's going to cost us. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Which one are you guys looking at? Do you know which country? Uh, I don't think she's narrowed it down. Like, Monica would be nice, but I think Monica would be, like, super. You better start saving yeah, Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. okay, it's not going to be Monica because we're, we're not going to afford, afford that. But, uh, no, I think it's a bucket list trip that's going to happen. Okay, before we get into this news, if you could go to Europe for one race, where would it go? Oh, it's so hard. Man. Got, I, but I put think you a on the spot. What's is, your top three? Silverstone, Red Bull Ring, and um, uh, the uh, Monza. Fair enough. But Silverstone would be cool because it's outside, right? And you see the caravans. I want to rent the caravan, go out there early and, 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 and camp yeah. and just be part yeah. of it for the... Yeah, I don't picture... Like, I, well, I should. I don't really picture Brits camping much. Oh, it's huge, but man. But they do that there. They also have their big Glastonbury musical festival where it's a big deal and stuff. But I also just like, if I picture Brits, I don't picture them going camping. No, I don't know why. Uh, like trailer parks in Britain are funny. When I played over there, they're they're little. Like they're not like here, right? Yeah. Everything's smaller. But you'd come across, and they would, they were so nice. Like there'd be this field and these little cars and little campers. But then they had like uh, like gardens where okay. they, they there were plots where oh, they yeah? would 
they would grow stuff and there would be flowers and things. It was a, uh, it was quite impressive actually. But yeah, that that culture would be uh, would be a lot of fun. I I don't know. I mean, Melbourne would be great too. Like I'd love to go to Australia, but if I'm going there, I want. I would. Uh, I'd like to see the Australian Open and then hit the race right after. I think it's it's close, but it. I'd have to spend another couple months there, I guess. But uh, no, I think I think Silverstone. Just the like the the history of it all. One of the birthplaces of F one. Um, I think that that's like the Augusta of of F one. Fernando Alonso, multi year deal, Aston Martin. He'll take them into 2026 when their team brings their works deal with Honda. In. Yeah. So it's Alonso and Stroll staying together. This is Stroll's not going anywhere. This is a joke. Yeah, but he's not going anywhere. No, but it, if then I was reading this guy and he was talking, and I completely agree for for Aston Martin to consider themselves a top team. You can't have Lance Stroll as your driver. Because he's not good enough. He's he's an okay driver, but he is uh, he's nowhere close to Alonso. And if you were to ask any other team on the grid, I think there are multiple guys that they would they would pick before they would have Lance Stroll in one of their seats. So until he's they stop this with him, maybe he's free. He's probably driving for free. So <laughs> maybe that's it. But yeah, I'd, you can't take them seriously until. Until they do something with this guy. Daddy owns the team. Would you cut your son? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's enough. Enough. That's enough. the only reason you're there is because of your son. I know. Lance Stroll or Lawrence Stroll probably just walks away from F1 if his son doesn't Well, race. it doesn't help that he keeps talking about how great his son is, too. I mean, but he's not good enough. He's got it. I don't know. So now, so this leaves. So we know Lewis... And Charles Ferrari, Aston's done. So Mercedes needs someone with Russell. We don't know what's going on with Red Bull. With we will Perez. in the next month and a half, so to speak. And McLaren's probably good. McLaren's st- st- sticking with with their two guys. So now, what happens with Science? Let's say Red Bull doesn't go. Like, is Science now just going to Mercedes? Well, that's interesting because that was that was talk of him going there, right? So um, I think he's. Sniffing around Red Bull to see what Checo does, but Checo's been Checo's been great. I don't see why. I they... saw a stat that he, I think, is the only driver, maybe taking Max out of this potentially, that hasn't been overtaken this year. Oh, really? That's a nice stat. Mm-hmm. And he's been he's been consistent. So um, the other thing, well, we'll probably talk about a pit stop, but Alpine is a mess. They're just there are. If you've watched Drive to Survive, it's it's a it's terrible in that team right now. Between their two guys, anyway. Like between them, like, yeah, they beef. hate each other. Well, there was that. That was always a, a question mark of when Gasly went and yeah. joined Ocon because there was family issues. Yeah, for, I think they used to be friends, but it was Best the families yeah. that caused problems, and now there's the beef. Yeah, mm. not like my daughter at dance, same type of thing. <laughs> but uh, no, they uh, and even Albin or. Uh, what did he do? Was it last race or whatever? Um, I think he finished ahead or got to P2 and was all happy and because yeah, Gasly didn't and then didn't care that he got to Q3. So, yeah, it's uh, – it's uh, or Esteban, sorry. Um, yeah, no. They're, uh, they're a mess. Car sucks. So, who knows? Bring on 2025. There's issues now, too. For they, what? With uh, some of the – the the technical changes they're doing to the car they don't they're all the testing they're showing they're not as proficient in the in the aerospace so For not who? good everyone yeah so but then so they, it affects everyone so it's not a big deal not a big deal I want just Ferrari to challenge Red Bull next year I want everyone to challenge everyone I, I, that's fine but I mean at the very least like I'm not going to be too greedy yeah Charles and Lewis challenging Max and whoever that's it. I want to go into each race knowing, even if Red Bull does end up winning every race, it's close. Yeah. That's all yeah, I want. I'd I want competition. It, I'd love it to come down to At the top. strategy, like where they, they have to pick the— How right. Ferrari screwed up a couple years ago, because they could have 
at early on at least they should have won beaten red bull a lot more they should have won the strategy that was yeah. disastrous week in and week out yeah the charles should have won that year with the with the amount of times he uh he should have finished the race in first some of it was reliability with the cards but that creeped in later on but uh no he should have won that year for sure have you watched drive to survive not yet yeah i'm okay. gonna have to now gonna have to it oh sucked gosh. all of us in like it, it actually is quite i've never i'm i'm pretty stubborn shocking <laughs> um i went into that knowing like people like you're gonna watch f1 you're gonna love it i went one i don't want to watch this yeah i'm not gonna like it and then two if i watch it i'm not gonna watch f1 after i like too many other sports i don't mm. have time and I watched it. I'm like, I love left one. I love it. Like, <laughs> let me watch F1. I, I will. I didn't stay up this weekend for it, but most like I will stay up most times when it's late or I'll wake up early in the morning and press play on it. And it sucked me in all because of the show. My sister does that. Like she gets up, she wa- oh. watches it live. You know, she's big into it. It's best. It's the best. Yeah. Now that, well, there's one more race that'll be at night in China there. But then we're going back to, I think, Miami after that. And then I like night races. I love it. I love staying up. There's just been too many. Yeah. In a row. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. I I'd I'd rather have, break it up. Yeah, just mix mix it up. Once a month or every four or five races, I would love a night race. Yeah. Because I just I like I'm a night guy. Like I'd rather stay up and wait, stay until one and then sleep in the next day or whatever. And it's nice when it's in North or South America where, you know, kind of same time zones. So you get a a good feel in the afternoon and watch a race. That's fun. That's great. I also like sports under the lights. Like if I have a football game to me on a Sunday night or something under the lights, I love it. It's one of the, it's probably the only thing I don't like about our summers in Edmonton is just the sun's out so long. Too many games aren't under the lights at right. Commonwealth because it's it's always so lit. Was I talking to you about this? What do you no. think? Do you like going to, well, it'd be a Bombers game for you, but yeah. if they're here and it's sunny out, but then the lights come on later... Do you like that, or oh, do you yeah. just? I like that. Yeah. But was it you? You you want no, nighttime? I don't think we've talked about this. Oh really? Then it's someone else. Maybe it was Eric that I talked about with. Like you just keep the lights off? No, no. He. I like the fact that you get there and it's light out, but then the the bright lights come out and you don't realize it, and by the end of the game it's kind of dark. I I like that at a football game, but Eric, I, it must have been Eric because it wasn't you. So he says, no, I like the. I like the lights on at the beginning, the bright lights at the beginning and and throughout. But I, there's something to me about playing with the sun, the sun out. Maybe it's being in a uh, rink for better part of my life. I've never noticed it football wise. No, but I also haven't been to games a lot over the last like ten years. Oh, okay, um, I've been at the studio. Um, f- baseball, I've, I remember it. Baseball. I don't know if the Riverhawks do it, whether the lights are on or off. But I remember working with the Capitals. There'd be the moment where lights got lights turned come, on and yeah. they. they just slowly turn on. You're like, no one's noticing this, but the lights are just gradually yeah. turning on. Uh, I, I I don't think it matters to me because I don't, again, I don't notice it. The sun's out and I'm happy. Like I could, I could feel it. I like sitting on like a Commonwealth. I'll sit on East side if I can, mm-hmm. because then the sun's shooting on me yeah. and I want to sit in the sun. Exactly. I don't want to be in the shade. <laughs> Same at uh, River Hawks. You want to be, uh, except Sundays, you want to be on the first, a uh, third baseline behind the R- River Hawks dugout. Because the sun will be shooting on you the whole time. Sundays, because they usually start earlier, you'll only hit your side. If you're on the other side of first baseline, it's <laughs> going to be on your face the yeah. whole time. If you're worried about your tan. The science of being a spectator. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's about worrying about making sure you have the even tan lines. and <laughs> Can't wait. You don't want to be just you know brown on one side and not get the tan on the other <laughs> side. Otherwise, you've got to sit backwards. And you I have focus put on these things. a lot of thought into that. A I, lot. You want to know, early in the year, I do focus on the tan. I want to make sure I'm, it's one of the reasons I want a yard so I could lay out a little more. And <laughs> I tan nice. I, I'll say that. I do tan nice. So it matters. I burn That's my now. Do you? Yeah. Now I do. It's too intense. I remember as a kid, it didn't matter. Sunscreen, baby. Oh, I know. Now I have to. You should always. You should always, I know. But now I do. It's the big mistake. 40s all the time. I was always, uh, when I was younger, I was always down a court because I always had a tan line right there. <laughs> and they take your hat off and it's like, oh, this looks bad. <laughs> You're down a court, Pete. Oh, yeah, I'm down great. a court. That's one of my favorite parts of watching a golf tournament on like the Sunday when they take their take hats their hat off, off to shake yeah. and you just see how white their forehead is compared to the rest. And you're just like, that looks amazing. That's why uh, Struddy likes visors. So it uh, just gets 
tans down the down the power alleys. There. I hate visors. <laughs> <laughs> I judge golfers based on their hats. Oh, it's, really? The reason I do not like Bryson DeChambeau, the first reason I didn't like him is he had that mailman hat. Oh. And I didn't think it looked good, and that's the reason I don't like Bryson DeChambeau. Then I didn't like his slow golf. I didn't like a lot of other things. But in the end, it started with the hat. I'm very weird that way. First impressions. It's it's huge. And in golf, it's the hat is the thing you notice. I'm also intrigued that they never, like, you don't have anyone that doesn't wear a hat. Yeah. Didn't Daly not wear a hat? Daily You're bit. right. Yeah. So he's the lone wolf kind of like that. I remember watching. I love the legends of Bill, or, uh, John Daly. What was the course in Vancouver? He came out and he was uh, he was trying to detoxify or whatever. <laughs> and he, he was just, he had the shakes. He had like a parka on. What's it's a golf course in Surrey. I remember watching it. He would he was unbelievable though. Like he was leading the tournament for like till the Sunday, and uh, he would hit a ball and just drop his club and just like shiver down because <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't drinking or whatever. Oh man! But the skill to be able to play through that is incredible. And inc- like even like you hear other golfers talk about how talented John Daly is. Um, it's hilarious. And to see him now, he just, you can go see him. Oh, and yeah. I did it a couple of years ago at the, uh, seniors tour goes to Calgary. Really? He played in again at, in it, uh, two years ago, I think it was, I saw him there. He had his cart, medical cart, like yeah. exemption. So he was driving around and Perfect. it's just like, it's John Daly. Yeah. Like it was, and then there's the stories of him just, uh, just going out drinking the night before and showing up just whatever ready yeah, to go straight and to the tee box straight and, and no problem just yeah. shoots well it's what he does uh, it's great it, it's also the great stories that you get of baseball where like you've got like the what is it david wells was drunk when he threw <laughs> yeah, an o'hare yeah, or whatever yeah. it was yeah. and the guy on lsd throwing a perfect game and it's just like that's baseball right there i want more of those stories <laughs> makes it we'll interesting <clears throat> we probably won't get many of those anymore but uh oh, once in a while though Rear their ugly head. Wow, we got the show with Tani store, not with, the, uh, with his thing, but now that's getting, I don't want to say swept under the rug, but it's... Isn't it? Well, because I don't know what the truth is. Like, and, and I would now like to believe that the truth is what we're being told here. And that's it, it seems like the interpreter is going to plead guilty. And part of what, like, he did change passwords and change settings so that Otani didn't get the messages oh, they're... about the transaction. So that's why, like, mm. when you're sitting there, like, how do you not know? You're missing all this money. Well... He changed things. So, like, maybe I'm too naive on that one to believe that Otani just didn't know and not a this is a full cover up to make sure that the biggest star in baseball isn't caught in a gambling scandal. It's very worrisome that, you know, uh, people get taken advantage of. I, I think just because the, the Tyson fight coming up, like, he got taken advantage of by everyone. I remember his net worth, you know, this thing around seventy million, and then people just well, Jack Johnson, his yeah, parents, yeah, parents yeah, were took all his money and trying to invest. Yeah, they took it all. Like, it, yeah, there needs to be something put in place to to protect guys. I'm surprised. I think the PA does like they do something along those lines, but yeah, that's uh, that's worrisome. Plus, for I think there should be a a sense of accountability from Otani as well. Like you have to know your finances to maybe not all of it. And you have people put in place, but you got to know. Right. But here's the thing. Like if, if you have all this money, how easy is it to know $4 million? And I know that sounds crazy to think, but like, I don't know. Was it how, like, was it 25,000 here, 50,000 there? And how easy is it to recognize that you're out 50,000 when you have all that money? Well, and, and also you've got a financial advisor who hands you a statement? Yeah, and, and and you're going off of like you know my RRSPs. Yeah, I, I'm trusting, you know, my the people that I invest with that when they give me the statement, that money's actually there. Mm-hmm. And then you know if you turn on ten years later, try to get the money out, and oh yeah, there's nothing there. Well, what? Wait a sec. You show me the statements. Yeah, those were all lies. The whole Bernie Madoff. Fantastic mm-hmm. scandal. Like with yeah. all of that, all those people, they were getting statements of their money, but yeah. they didn't have money. Nothing. Yeah, just moving it around. So, like, yeah, like, how much do you have, like, I think if he all of a sudden lost $4 million one day, then, yeah, I think there could be a little more. Qu- how do you just all of a sudden lose $4 million? Yeah. But if it's a little bit here, a little bit, like, depending how that went, I, I, I could see why Otani wouldn't know. So how do you, and then they eventually found it, though. Yeah. 
And then the questions are starting to be asked. So this isn't a sense of him kind of knowing his finances. And I think as long as you're actually able to do the things you want to do and the money's paying for stuff, that's all you, that's what yeah. you notice. And yeah. then all of a sudden, you know, you try to do something as like, what do you mean? I can't afford the ticket to go to this. So like where I've got lots of money. Yeah. No, you don't anymore. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's wor- that's a little worrisome with uh, with Shohei. Hopefully, well, I mean that would be a huge blow to baseball if he. So uh, th- and that's where I go with the. There's a little protection, right? Like, so am I being naive to think that this is this isn't being swept under the rug? He, right, of like course him, it is a little uh, bit, and that's it. yeah. But you're dealing with federal prosecutors and stuff like that, and. Well, Mac Romello But I guess you get paid off. Like, you could just pay off this interpreter. Yeah. He's just going to take the fall. You take the fall. We've got you covered. Your family's covered. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's white collar crime. So you'll, you know, you'll be out of jail soon and (laughs) then you'll live your your rich life. (laughs) Do you deal with any white collar crimes back in the day? Uh, A little bit. Yeah. Used to do some work on proceeds of crime, basically going after uh, drug dealers' money. Oh, okay. Trying to get that forfeited to the the crown. What, uh, how does that? work uh well it, it actually changed while i was doing it because uh ontario first did it and now and then alberta started going with uh, civil forfeiture where you would go after the money in civil court as opposed to criminal court okay. it was criminal court you'd have to prove one the offense occurred and then you've got to prove that the money that you seized was directly from that offense oh. Other, otherwise you know the person well no I, I made the money doing this now sometimes you try to get them to give you a statement where the money came from, and then you yeah. prove they're lying, which yeah. hurts their chances. But in civil court, it's you know it's fifty fifty. You know fifty well fifty one percent. You you've only got to get over that fifty percent to prove where the money came from. And in civil court, they actually had to, you know, in criminal court, you can just say I don't want to say anything. But in civil court, you know, one side presents their their claim saying this is what happened. If the other side doesn't put something out there to defend it, oh, that, yeah. then the judge says, well, I've only heard this story. I've heard nothing from you, so okay, I'm going to rule with these guys. So the the criminal was basically forced to say yeah. where the money came from and testify to it. So civil forfeiture made that so much easier, which kind of put me out of a job. So I had to do other <laughs> things. <laughs> what about like uh, my 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 friend who's a officer, uh, Edmonton Police? But he talked about some sting operations. One is always fascinating to me. They would they would have a guy and they wanted to get more information from him. Yeah. So he was like more undercover. So another cop car would pull up. And he would be in the back as a as like someone that's being arrested. So the guy that they just arrested would see him and then they would be in the same cell that night and talk and then he would get information. You ever do anything like that? Uh I I've, I've been involved in a few files where where we did stuff like that. Yeah. Um uh, you know, one that that's out in the media so much, so I, I, I'm not really worried about talking about it, is the you know the whole Mr. Big scenario, oh, yeah. where where they actually get the criminal, the, the guy that that their target that they believe is a criminal, they get him to come in and it's like, okay, you want to join our criminal organization? You've got to tell us what you've done to make sure that we we think you're worthy of it. Right. So then you get the bad guy. He's actually said, well, I did this and this and this, and it's like, okay, you make more <laughs> and it's like, thank you, buddy. Yeah, we've got our evidence now. And then Mr. Big, the undercover cop, goes and testifies to you know what he was told, and you know hopefully they've potentially got recordings as well. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 a real big, but yeah, I don't mind talking Mr. Big because it's been in the media so much. Yeah. It still works. Yeah, that's unreal. <laughs> well, it's, there's a scene of The Wire. I don't know if you guys know, where there's an opening scene where they were at a photocopy machine and they made it look like a lie detector. And the yes. guy, and it was just like, hey, what's your name? And they'd print and the sheet really? would come out, yes. And, you know, because you say your name and then, like, do you live here? You'd, like, say the address. It'd be, like, truth or whatever. And then, did you kill this person? No. And it would come out and be, like, false. Oh, you liar. And then he'd go into a room and then... They'd get this guy going for McDonald's, like his partner, and he'd come back and they'd tell him, like, the your partner, he's got McDonald's because he's spilling the beans <laughs> on you. And then he walks by eating McDonald's, but they just got yeah, a McDonald's. Yeah, and then he's yeah. like, he spills the beans. And I can't, the quote or something is like, they'll believe anything, you know, like, and it's just some, some people are just stupid enough that they'll just believe what they're told. It is an excellent cold opener of the wire where they're just this photocopy machine and Jay Landsman and just like with his glasses <laughs> as he's looking, it's. I'll show you after the show. It's fantastic. I recommend to anyone that's just wants to go on YouTube and look for that cold open. It's hilarious. I, I, I love that. That was a great series. Like it was in in some ways very accurate, but in other ways very inaccurate. Like, but 
you can't be totally accurate. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like they they compress things so it happens a lot quicker than it would really happen in real life. But you look at it, it's like, well, no, that's that's actually a real technique. Oh no, that's that's actually kind of no factual. So yeah. What's the like? If you were to rate them, like what are the top three realistic kind of cop shows that you would say that are closest to the real thing? Uh, the Wire is definitely up there. So brilliant. Uh, I liked Hill Street Blues back oh, okay. in the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah like it, it was, uh, you know, some things might not be super accurate, but it was it was really kind of rough and, and you know, kind of showed a, a whole bunch of different stories mm -hmm. of different, you know, you got your plainclothes guys, you got your drug guys, you've got your uniform guys, and it was it was real kind of gritty, kind of, mm -hmm. yeah, I like that show. Uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank on my third one now. Uh, cracking under the pressure here. Yeah. Do you know who's in it? <laughs> or you just I can't think of one? I just can't think of one. Yeah. Yeah, the I Wire's can't. too good? Yeah. yeah. Honestly, if you, ever, you haven't seen The Wire then? No, I haven't. Watch yeah. it. Like, it's, straight it's, up, I highly recommend yeah. that one. It's, I know. It's frustrating, too. I'm assuming as a cop, it must be frustrating if things are like that. Like, sometimes dealing with bureaucracy or something. Oh, yeah. Times. I could have, like, it's, it's excellent. They, they touch on school systems. They touch on politics. They touch on the docks for a little bit. It's actually the, the, with the Baltimore Bridge collapse. The mm. final scene, I think, or one of the scenes of that series in that season is them looking at that bridge. Oh, really? Because of how important the docks are to Baltimore. Yeah. And it's, they they do just such a fantastic job with it. It's, I highly recommend it. And just, yeah, watch that cold open there. It is great. The, the last yeah. season kind of went a little bit over the, the edge. The media part was, yeah, because it was the media season. There's parts of it that, like, for media-wise, like, there's a truth to that. But then there was this, the one storyline with the serial killer. Yeah. Yeah, McDalty going. Like, yeah. with, with Freeman, and you're just like, this is it. No, that's not <laughs> happening. Like, everything else I can honestly say yeah. legitimately could be real. <laughs> that point, it's like, no. Yeah. That you can't get away with that one. Is there, is there, is there wakes like they have? Do you guys do wakes like that at a bar? Or uh, you can't you know say? Not, uh... In, in, in my 25 years, things have changed greatly. Like, I remember when I first started 25 years ago, uh, we had a big uh, booze seizure uh, on a, a place that we weren't allowed, weren't allowed to have booze. And so we're, you know, doing the paperwork on all the exhibits. And, and my corporal was like, you know, five years ago, we'd be sitting here cracking a beer while we're doing this. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and I'd hear stories about, you know, certain detachments where, you know, you'd, you'd finish your shift and guys would go upstairs and day shift would come in and night shift is passed out upstairs. <laughs> but, you know, those are, those are, that's back in the day. But that for was, like the fallen police officers, like you guys have your little get together. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. those like, those, th those were emotional scenes and stuff too. But oh. it's like also cool like how it's like the brotherhood's there together. Yeah. To have the, their, the, it's the, I can't remember how they were. It's like their funeral until the real funeral, whatever it is. I remember after uh, Mayor Thorpe, there was a, mm. I think it was a Washington City cop who uh, who came up and was here for, for the ceremony. And he somehow got uh, interviewed by, by the media. And he said, uh, I had to come because every, uh, every police funeral in the States, I see one of your, uh, your red uniforms. So I had to, you know, wow. had, to, had to show the respect. Really? Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. Uh, fantastic show. Yeah. It, it gets you. Like, it's, you get frustrated, you get happy. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. McNulty's an amazing character. Bosch. Uh, oh, there we go. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, watched Bosch. Bosch. I, I, I watched two episodes. I go, oh, okay, I can get into this. It's so. funny. I didn't hear you say The Shield. Um, <laughs> Dusty and Eric keep saying The Shield's better than The Wire and stuff. And um, I didn't hear The Shield in your top three, but I did hear The Wire. So, <laughs> yes. I, I do like The Shield, but no, I wouldn't put it... Uh, it, uh, it, it grabbed Perfect. me uh, at the end of the first episode where it's like, wow, he just murdered a cop. <laughs> okay, I got to watch this. Like, holy cow, this is, yeah, gripping. <laughs> but not better than The Wire. The Wire no. takes four episodes. I stand by four okay. episodes. To, you get through the first four, you might be like, this is, sucks, this is boring. Get past the four, you're good for the rest of the series. Uh, time now for the EST, a flyaway keyword, a little bit later today. But the morning show was later with theirs, so I bumped ours back a little bit. Uh, two nonstop flights, three nights accommodations, tickets to Cirque du Soleil, uh, all courtesy of your partners in Vegas, the LVCVA, and the Edmonton International Airport. Fly YEG, nonstop flights to over 50 destinations. Your sports trip starts with a nonstop flight from Fly YEG. Visit flyyeg.com for more information. Our keyword for today, if I remember it correctly, spectacle. 
spectacle to 780-218-9999. Vegas is always home to some sort of spectacle. I usually think of it in like a boxing spectacle way. Um, I don't know where Tyson uh, Paul is. I think that's Vegas. It's that's got to be it's in gotta. Vegas. Or... That whole spectacle's got to be in Vegas. 780-218-9999. Text it, and you'll go into a draw. Zach to come. will call someone in the next five minutes. Tyson, Paul, fight. Where is this taking place? It's got to be Vegas. Oh, it's in Texas. That's what I was going to say. I think it's in Texas oh, Stadium. That's not as fun. No, that's where, like, Canelo fights all the time and stuff. It's, it's huge. No, a, a real boxing fight's in a real, Vegas. Yeah, you, I've heard. If it's not in Vegas, it's MSG. Those are the meccas of boxing, I think. Like when I've never been to one, but people say, I mean, you guys were there for the for the Super Bowl and stuff. But the the lead up to a a major fight in Vegas, like the week before, fight night? is unparalleled. Like it's just so much stuff going on. I mean, Vegas is great for them. Well, I'd you, love so to- you could just imagine all the people that are there for the show, just parting it up in the days leading yeah. up. What are you doing in Dallas? Yeah, I don't know. Like, all the celebs are going to go to Dallas and do what? Like, you're all there on the strip together. Canelo goes there because... Yeah, well, he's speaking... Got... Like, you'll have the Mexican communities are for them to come up yeah. and watch that fight. Yeah. And because, like, why. even in soccer, it's like, I always laugh when the U.S. does play matches against Mexico closer to the southern border. Because it's yeah. like, yeah, you're going to fill up, yeah. but there's yeah. going to be a lot of Mexican <laughs> yeah. fans. Yeah. And you've just given up home field to the Mexicans mm-hmm. type thing. So, I don't know. Like, Paul... This is a complete like this isn't a boxing fight. It's an exhibition. Why put it in Vegas? <laughs> no, it's it Give is me an exhibition. show. I hope it's an exhibition cuz What well, is considered an exhibition? I know. It, it I mean, yeah, because they couldn't get it uh I don't think they could legalize it because of Tyson's age. It's just Oh, well, they couldn't get it sanctioned. Sanctioned by the, by the Yeah, exactly. So Yeah, I think it's just a it's a cash grab thing. Spectacle 780-218-9999. That's your keyword for the EST flyaway. We're giving this bad boy away on April 26th. You have till April 25th to qualify. So you've been to Vegas before? A couple times. You've it enjoyed is. it? Oh, yes. Yes. It is great. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually been a surprise number of qualifiers that have never been. Really? Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's like, as someone who had never been myself until this year, like it makes me be like, yeah, okay, I'm not completely weird. I'm weird for other reasons, right? Like, it's I can't lose those ones. But for having never been to Vegas until 33, I'm not weird because so many other people are like me. I, uh, yeah, it's been decades since I was there. So it, it'd be, and I was too focused. I couldn't really partake in anything. Um, first night, MGM Grand, you know, we were playing blackjack and stuff. Though, so that was fun. And what was weird is they just keep bringing you drinks. Like, that was just crazy. I must have tried... I was young at the time, so I was trying all these. They all had umbrellas in them. You were just trying different ones? <laughs> yeah, yeah, was, you just went through oh, the menu? Yeah, I saw Mai Tai. What's in that? <laughs> uh, uh, it was our Christmas party at uh, Hudson's this year. They have, what are they called? I forgot what they're called, but they're just like quick shots or whatever. And we tried them all. Oh God! We went through, like, we had a couple early because we had first a meeting, a couple of us. We had like two at the meeting. And then all of a sudden we had a third, and I was like, okay, well, we got to try every one now. There's like eight of them or something. So we went through all of them and then went back and tried a few more. So it was, um, you just got to do it sometimes. It's oh, yeah. science. Oh, yeah. I, it's I've, research. Yes. It was called, uh, it stated, I could never find it since. I think it's called the Chunky Monkey. And it was like Hagen dazs ice cream with Kahlua. Like it was, it was a milkshake, essentially, right? Probably about 8 billion calories in this thing, but it was delicious. And I was, trashed after drinking that thing it was unbelievable but yeah no you can uh you can definitely expand the palate for drinking down there i remember uh playing a, a drinking game years <laughs> ago in the army called seven fourteen twenty one. you'd use uh dice and only your ones would count and everyone would take their turn and the person who hit number seven they would they would pick the drink <laughs> and then the person with 14 would pay for the drink, and the person who got the 21 would drink the drink. So the person who picked the drink would usually probably try and find a combination of alcohol beverages that would make Bailey's curdle. <laughs> <laughs> and then you would pray that you didn't get 21 yeah. as well, because that's, uh, uh, it's on you, but that's your fault. It's 
it was a horrible game. <laughs> yeah, horrible. they're also the best ones. <laughs> That's the way you want to do it. It's like when you have to play something with King's Cup and everyone pours their drinks into King's Cup and you don't want to be the one having to drink King's Cup. And then when you drink King's Cup, well, your nights, it could go really wrong after that point. So ah, it's all in good fun. Uh, what is, Banff has a thing. I think it's called a trash can. It comes in like a mini pitcher. And it's like an adult juice, oh, like an adult yeah. Kool Aid, and yeah. they're just so easy to go down. Yeah, and it's those are the, those are the dangerous ones when you're not tasting the alcohol. Yes, yeah. that's when you're you could really be screwed. When you read the the menu and you see how many shots of different things are in there, and then you take a sip and you can't taste any one of those things, that's uh, the 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 wheels are going to come off. You're in yeah. for a good night. Yeah, no, that's good. Or a bad night. Yeah, bad night. Yeah, well, just, bad next morning for sure. Although maybe all the fruit in the drink will kind of offset the next morning a little <laughs> yeah. bit. You get a that's little bit of vitamin C. Yeah, the, maybe. <laughs> that sugar kills you. Yeah, that's what... It's the headaches yeah. come on and... Yeah. It's... It's what you got to do. Got to have some fun. You know, it's, it's... it's You know, it's... Looks windy at the Masters. Well, the, the, so the nice weather the rest of the tournament. But today everything was delayed. I think only one Canadian's on the course right now. I think Corey Connors is out there. Um, you don't watch much golf. Not a lot. No. Do you play a lot? Uh, I don't play a lot, but I do play. Yeah. Decent golfer. Oh, pack I'm horrible. It up. Okay. Horrible. So you're just like everyone else. <laughs> yes. Because anyone that says they're really good, you're basically a liar for the most part. <laughs> it's uh, terrible watching these guys. Like, I just watched uh, before the show, just on, on the driving range. Like, their swings, they're perfect. You know, they make it look so effortless. And so when I swing, I, that's how I think I look until I see it. And then it's like, oh, my gosh. They do. You can see sometimes they'll, like, show somebody's iron. And, this, like, the the mark of the ball dead center. Like, it's nowhere else. It's just, yeah. it's there dead Every center. time. You're just like, I, mine's the complete opposite. The ball's hit <laughs> everywhere else <laughs> but that sweet spot. Uh, right now, Bryson is a tie to top the leaderboard with Van Ruyen and Fox at three under. Mm. Two Canadians on the course, both plus one. Corey Connors threw four holes. Nick Taylor threw his first hole. Uh, for those that are interested in someone like Tiger Woods, he tees off today. They're saying 154. He'll be on the course. I don't think all these guys are going to be able to finish today, so we'll probably have the end of the first round tomorrow, second round, but then everyone should catch up tomorrow, and then we're good for the weekend. Um, or I'll hunker down and watch the entire coverage on TSN. As Dothy tweeted earlier today, I was telling it to you yeah. guys that Canada is one of the few nations in the world that gets to air the digital feeds on TV. So during the mornings when you're watching Amen Corner, they do the featured groups. Um, I also think they do 15, 16, 17. I think those are the three things. They're shown on TSN, and we're one of the few countries in the world that actually gets to show it, and you don't have to go find the digital feed for it, so you can just flip on your cable for it. So Perfect. It's, um, I know that's one of Dothy's biggest favorite things to do of the year like he looks quite happy the at the, on the panel there yeah it looks looks pretty good it's it would be a dream of mine to go there the town and itself the, is terrible but yeah it's it's only there for the one week of the <laughs> yeah. year and it's, i i will i'm gonna go cover it for est one year because I just want to enter the draw to golf it. <laughs> I'm going to go into like a golf it one year and be able to walk back and say i golf the augusta you, would you walk it i think you have to I think you have to too. Yeah, I think I think it's. Working. I'd have to ask, yeah. but I think you get a caddy. Oh, do you? I think they give you a caddy. So if you do it, so what happens for those that don't know? Me to enter into the draw on the Sunday, they get so many winners. On the Monday, you get to golf the course with the pins on the Sunday placement, and so and I, you're not golfing tips. I don't think. Mm -hmm. I think you get to golf the yeah. tee boxes you need to. Um, but I think you're given a caddy because I remember having Duthy talk about the story once and like they help you read the green and stuff. Oh, yeah. Because if you don't have the caddy, you're screwed on that green probably. <laughs> be there all day. It's and all then, day. No, you'll be all quick. Like, it's, so, you are just yeah. going to, you're going to think, oh, it's only not going to yeah. break much. And it's no, it's going to break a lot. Aim well over here. So you need that caddy. But I don't know if they would do the carts as much. I don't think they'd want you driving out there. Yeah, I think I you'd have to, I'd want to walk it. Too. Uh, yeah, I'd want to walk it anyway. I'd want to enjoy, like if I was golfing Augusta. Yeah. I would want to do it as it's supposed to be done. Exactly. Uh, we've got our qualifier for the EST. A flyaway today. Who do we got on the line, Zach? Fat Efron. Fat Efron. Congratulations. Uh, you are now into the mix for this trip to Vegas. You've been to Vegas before? Oh, no. I can't hear anything. You can't hear me? 
All I hear him say is, oh, I can't hear anything. Oh, I can hear him, but is that Zach Efron, you there? Yeah, I am. Hey, perfect. Congratulations. You're in the mix uh, to go to Vegas. Have you been to Vegas before? Never. And You've this is my second time qualifying, so. Never. He's Fingers never crossed. been? And his second time qualifying. Good for you. I know there's a lot of people that are going to be upset because they can't even get in once. Somehow you got in a second time. Uh, don't blame me. Yeah. I was sitting here. I didn't draw it for those people. Uh, what would intrigue you most about being, uh, to, you know, to do in Vegas if you were able to go? I kind of, well, I know I have to check out the Taco Bell for sure. Oh, the Taco and Bell then, to Cantina? <laughs> yeah. And then I want to maybe shoot some guns or go on a racetrack. Very nice. Well, you're in the mix. Be sure to keep your phone on April 26th because in the morning show, they'll be calling someone to say they're the winner. If you are the winner, uh, keep, you have to answer. And if you are, you'll, the boys will tell you that you're off to Vegas. Fingers crossed, boys. Congrats. Best of the luck. Work. Appreciate that. Zach Efron there, our qualifier. Next chance to qualify coming up during the lock shop with Dusty and Huss. And then one more chance today. Two guys and a goalie. Uh, as Dusty, we have the keyword when Gager and Cass are on uh, at noon right here in Amethyst Sports Talk as you guys will um, recap the Oilers' win and look ahead to the two tomorrow big games night. this weekend. You got yeah. the Coyotes tomorrow and you got the Canucks on Sunday or Saturday. Saturday. Um, yeah. What do you think of the move? I was about to ask you guys. Oh. Going to Salt Lake. Yeah. It's, is that actually happening? I will say I would put it at probably 95% chance it's now happening. I think with the amount of reports coming from guys like Frank Saravalli, from Pierre Lebrun, from Elliot Freeman, Jeff Merrick, um, Bill Daly not giving a no yesterday. Mm -hmm. Like I, Usually when there's been talks about is this team moving, it's we're committed to Arizona, we're staying in Arizona. And yesterday I think Bill Daly's quote was something along the lines, I'm paraphrasing her, of, we're we're observing the situation. We have nothing to comment on, which is a something is happening there. Washing our hands it of it. It <laughs> sounds like what's going to happen to a degree is the NHL will buy the team for a bill. They will then sell the team to Ryan Smith for one point three bill. So then the owners of the, the National Hockey League will spit three hundred million, which over thirty two teams isn't isn't that mm -hmm. much for those guys. Um, and then the owner Morello or Moreno or whatever of the Coyotes. He basically will have a promise of if he can get a rink built in Arizona, he'll be given a team in Arizona franchise, an expansion at some point in the next 10 years. Mm. So Doesn't they work. get out of mullet, they go to Salt Lake, and they could still relive Gary's dream of being Arizona if they can get a rink done. It doesn't work there, though. That's I, I don't know. Here's the one reason I would argue that it, we don't know that it doesn't work. There's They've never had like a successful team for three, four years in a row. Yeah, that's true. They've had a couple decent years. Mike Smith and that team, Mike they went Smith, to the, they went to the, the conference, conference final. final. They were packed. Like, But they didn't, they weren't, it's the same with Columbus to me, is we haven't seen them be a top team in the division or their division or their conference for like a three, four year stretch to say, would the fans come out and support them game in and game out when they're good? Yeah. When you are a franchise that is just at the bottom, taking on bad contracts, being that team, why would you support them? Well, what a nightmare if, if I think, if they did well this year and were a playoff team, and that's where you're playing playoff games yeah. in the in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Embarrassing. That, that's embarrassing. Like, they had to do something. The fact that they thought they could be there for the next three years is mind-boggling to me. That's just crazy. So, um, yeah, I I mean, Utah, not not the most exciting place to go, but... Yeah, it's uh, it'd be a change. What are they? The Yeti I saw. What's the name? <laughs> the names went in. Uh, we guys can have names. multiple wives, I guess, too, right? So why? <laughs> the, it's going to be very interesting. They they're they're anti gambling in that state. They you know liquor is very hard to come by. Yeah. The NHL very much promotes gambling and liquor. Yeah, you know yeah. like yeah. you watch yeah. a game. There's very much a lot of promotions of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, but I, so the NBA does it with Utah Jazz. Uh, we'll see how it fully plays out. Initially, the rink's not going to be great there. It's no. better than mullet, but I think I saw the rink because it's not designed for hockey. They say 14, but really it's 11. Mm. That's all it can mm. seat. And it's going to look weird. Do you remember when they, the um, Islanders were playing in Barclays Center? Yeah. It looked weird. Yeah. It's going to look weird watching the Utah or Salt Lake whatevers yeah. in this game. But I would assume that they're going to have a, a support from the fan base. I would assume that that's a good enough hockey market to do this, that 
Thanks. I don't think Ryan Smith, the owner of the Utah Jazz, not the Ryan Smith and the Edmonton Oilers, is doing this without knowing that his market wouldn't, like, I think he knows they would support it. Mm-hmm. So at least you got that. And I, there are, they want the Olympics in 2030. And with that would be a new rink that would be built, which then would be designed for both hockey and basketball, which obviously then the rink would be better. That was a good Olympics. That was the first. So too. Yeah. yeah. So first was, win in 50 years. Yeah. For the men's. The Gretzky speech. Yeah. I played again. I was in, uh, I was in Europe at the time. And I remember watching that and we were, it was funny because the team we were playing with, they came up to the bar in our rink and we were all, were all watching the game together. And one of the guys who was from Salt Lake, I forget his name now. Um, he was telling the best story because he, his place, uh, you could rent it out for, you know, during the Olympics, right? So yeah. he ba- whatever it was back then, he put it up for, for rental over two weeks and it was like a bidding war. And finally, he didn't know, but a company said, yeah, we'll take your place. We'll, whatever. He made a fortune on it. So like 10 grand or whatever it was. But he got home and he opened his garage, his whole garage. And he said it was boxes almost all the way to the back of Nike gear. Like it was golf clubs, golf shoes, like for his family. Like it was probably thousands. So Nike was actually one of the people uh-huh. that rented his house. And to say thank you for, for letting, uh, letting them use their, for their higher execs, I guess, uh, they gave him all this uh, free Nike stuff. It was Ooh. unbelievable. Every, tennis rackets, everything, hockey gear, just nuts. The one thing about a change too, see, it's all like it doesn't mess with divisions too. That's good. Yeah. They'll stay like they could stay in the central. Yeah, you're right next to like they're going. Was it two states up or like a state yeah. up type thing? But you're next to Colorado. You're in that central. You don't have to move. We don't have to deal any, with any sort of conference realignment. The only issue would be if, well, I guess if they're going to 36 teams, we're going to have completely different conferences, anyways. I do feel bad for for the guys that have you know they have roots there though. That's that's tough, especially young families. School friends, yeah. you know, guys with long term deals. Now you're telling your kids we're moving and and stuff. That's that's tough. Well, yeah, like some people are saying. Well, you kind of know if you, your head was in the sand if you weren't realizing a move was coming. But I don't think you realized it was coming this soon. Well, I don't think anyone expected a relocation immediately with the snap fingers. We've been always been talking about this land auction. When you sign a deal with the Coyotes, I don't think your whole thing, like when Bukestad was signing last year, I don't think he was thinking when he signed a two year deal yeah. that he's going to be Arizona one year and then Salt Lake the next no. year. So yeah. I do feel bad for them and their families and stuff kind of being like told, yeah, no, well, you had a you're to going to here. another city. <laughs> 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 but like it was one where, yeah, it could happen, but you know, nothing has really been said and they were still pushing for Arizona. And so, I, to me, that's the part where they got caught off guard. I'd hate that. Also, Dusty saying today that we're moving to Calgary. Yeah. Yeah. Edmonton Sports Talk in Calgary. Like, no. <laughs> I, I got to move for this? Yeah. No. Um, it was weird because I saw Tyson Nash put out a post that um, they were negotiating a plot of land in Phoenix and they were showing the pictures and he was all pumped up about this. This is great. You know, well, this is the land auction deal that they're trying in June. Yeah, it, the deadline's oh, okay. in June. For yeah. It. So. He's excited about it, but yeah, this is going to be a... <laughs> it seems like to me this just reads that they think, like, let's say that the, the, they get this land auction deal. Well, you still need to get the money, then build the facility. That's going to take time. You're playing in mullet then for how many more years? I think the NHL is going, we got an owner here that's willing to take this team now, play there, yeah, and then you could have another team. Oh, and yeah. it's we'll just get this done now, so we're not in mullet anymore. We don't want to be, like, the athletics are moving to Sacramento. They're going to get mocked. Let's get out of the attention of that one yeah. and let them be mocked, and we're... Yeah, we're fine, Gary. Just allow we'll, we'll uh, let a team back. Yeah, but let's just get the Salt Lake right now, and hopefully overcome a lot of the opposition. Like, because like Maris Scottsdale was was dead set against it. He put a big yes. yeah. editorial out saying this is we don't want this. But the lands next to Scottsdale is not yeah. in Scottsdale, which is like I, there's a lot of different cities that make up Metro Phoenix, mm. and yeah, I can imagine why Scottsdale wouldn't want it. It'll be fascinating when they get their team. Like, I'll, I, the one thing will be intriguing is where's the the history of this franchise? Does it stay like when the Cleveland Browns left to Baltimore, the Ravens basically became a brand new franchise? Though, and the history of the Browns stayed in Cleveland. So when they brought back the Cleveland football team, it was the Cleveland Browns again, and their whole history is still there. And the Ravens have a brand new history. Does the Coyote slash Jets move to Salt Lake? 
Or does it stay in Arizona, and then when they bring a team back, it's the Coyotes again, and that they were just not playing for a number of years, and Salt Lake's a brand-new franchise? Or are we seeing the history of the Jets and the Coyotes move to Salt Lake, yeah. and the, Coy- the Arizona gets a brand-new team, and would they call themselves the Coyotes, or would you go for a complete new refresh? No, from because they're not selling seats, maybe the Jets now move to Arizona. And then they now the Salt Lake, they're just working their way back to Winnipeg, essentially. <laughs> well, some, I saw somebody joke yesterday about the idea that this is now you move to Salt Lake. Arizona promised the team Winnipeg's going to sell their team because they're not selling seats. They'll move to yeah. Arizona. We're just reliving they're, this they're, all over yeah, again. Yeah, they're, gonna, they're going home. Oh. And then the team will move to Atlanta and they'll go to Quebec City. Oh, right. Because Atlanta right. fed Calgary, they fed Winnipeg, right. and then they'll go feel, feel Quebec joke. City 10 years from now. Uh, I. I'm okay with relocation. I don't like the talk of expansion. I don't like the idea of potentially 36 teams by the end of this decade or early into the next decade. No. I think that's too many, and we don't have enough hockey players for the talent pool for that level. We're talking about, we're seeing, it it shows, we're seeing what's what's happening in the NHL with records and, and offensive production that we haven't seen in decades. It's because it's allowed... The skill to develop, watering down two more expansion. They're going to look like back in the day when Tampa and, and just got talk of four. Yeah, like come on, guys. four. Yeah, you couldn't. Who are you going to ice those teams with? They would just be bottom feeders. It's terrible. There's a lot of teams rebuilding. <laughs> I guess you could put Phoenix in that or Utah or future Jets. <laughs> Maybe Winnipeg will have two teams. Who knows? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny how that Toronto still doesn't have that. I was going to say, two teams in Toronto, oh, why not? They need yeah. it. Yeah. If you are going, I will say, if you're going to 36, one has to be Toronto. Should be. If you can, if you want league revenue to go up, you want TV deals to go up, you want all that to go up, you need a second in Toronto. I know people are going to admit they're going to hate that, and there's more attention than that second team. But business-wise, that is the most sense. Yep. And I don't see why in Edmonton would be not like that. Gives us one more Toronto team to hate. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's the Toronto team we fall in love with. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. told I gotta be a Blue Jays fan because I'm in Canada and they're Canada's <laughs> team. Well, maybe the, the next Toronto team, it's not the Leafs. They'll win a Stanley Cup before the Leafs do. Yes, they will. I would love that. <laughs> Call in now. The next Stanley Cup <laughs> won in Toronto. Yeah, it's by the team that's not yeah. even playing hockey right yeah. now. <laughs> one day it will come. Uh that's it for the ESD Hangle presented by White Claw. Coach Pete, thanks for coming in and thanks for coaching us. At the Heavy Hockey Showdown, and uh, I love the work we're planning for next year already. <laughs> Sounds like it's going to be fun. Just <laughs> thanks for having me. Names. Uh, Gage, you're back at noon with two guys and a goalie, uh, and you guys can maybe go a little more into the the Fernando Alonso to oh, uh, yeah. or staying with Aston for a multi-year deal. I hope so. Boom. But Cass will just crow about him leading the pool, which will suck. Actually, he is, he is yeah, though. He is. Though. I'm doing decent. You're doing all right. Where yeah. am I? I think I'm fourth, fifth. Yeah. Hernan's third? Is that what well, it Hernan is? moved up, yeah, with my tutelage. He's my young pad one. Are you teaching him? Yeah. Oh. I just got to use my, uh, I got to make sure I use my chips at the right time. Well, it's a sprint race next uh, next weekend. Don't, so, uh, don't tell people that. Don't say that out loud. That's what a good commissioner does. No, a good commissioner is supposed to help others. He's supposed to try to win. <laughs> Where's my league? I want to end. I want to see where we are with this league right now. Private league. So, oh, I'm 6th, 7th. I dropped. Yeah. What is the leaderboard? So, Cass is 1 2. Hernan's 3 4. Luke's 5. I'm 6 7. You're 8 9. Kent's 10. Dusty's. Luke's 11. Dusty's 12 13. Kent's 14. It's funny how Dusty's Dusty, terrible. Uh, it's funny how Dusty crows about his, his hockey pools. Does he ever mention his F1? No. St- no. He also didn't even change his team names. <laughs> yes. Here's Dusty's team names for F1 fantasy team. Team 17107992658384 and also team 17107996855355. He's that's, Alpine. <laughs> that's mailing it in. <laughs> Gagers DRS for life and going soft to hard. I'm Homer to the max and podium hunting. Yeah. I want to just uh, max power, but they wouldn't let me. Oh, really? someone had that someone one. Had it's that a one, Simpsons yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, thanks for tuning into the EST Hangout here. Uh, Lock Shop coming up next with your next chance to qualify for the EST Flyaway with Dusty and Huss. Uh, and then two guys in a goalie at noon here on EdmontonSportsTalk.com. Tune in radio, iHeartRadio, as well as those watching on YouTube. Enjoy the Masters today as well. We'll talk a lot more about that, I think, a little bit uh, tomorrow. Again, thanks for watching. Lock Shop starting in just a few minutes. Let's go. Let's go. There you go. Right in front of the camera. <laughs> First time guest, longtime listener, fan of the original draft commissioner. 
Welcome to the EST Hangout presented by White Claw Hard Seltzer. The difference is clear. Matt Awana, Tom Zola with here. Joining us today, 